Do you ever write in uh, a tip on a on a check when they did zero? Oh yeah. No. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, oh, that's access to your money. I'm that's taking it. Against the law. I, so yeah, I break the law. I'm a legend. <laughs> I'm yeah. a renegade. <laughs> I would never. I love when people go, that's illegal. I'm like, you think I don't break the law? I do drugs. That's oh, number one. Yeah, I buy I've... graffiti. Like, what are you talking? No, no, I would never. I don't know if I've ever, I can't remember offhand, stiffing people. Oh, you know what I've done? When it's cash and they don't tip. So I just take it from the boss. Hey everybody, welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank Podcast. My name is Ari Shafir. Um, on today's episode, we got Colm Terrell and uh, and Kalen Palufo uh, coming in to talk about fucking being bartenders. Fun episode, fun episode. Yeah, they both sat in the studio and we just talked about their old days as being a bartender, all the shit they got into, the sex, the drugs, the rock and roll. Legitimately, we talked about all those things. Um. So yeah, it's a fun one. Real quick before I start, I got my special this uh, Saturday and Sunday, June 11th and 12th. June 11th should be sold out, but if there's no tickets available anywhere, I mean, look Friday night. If you can't get tickets anywhere, there might be, we we'll probably will put on like 20 extra tickets once we get like the full count of seats um, for the Saturday shows. But anyway, get tickets for Sunday. Um or if it's available for Saturday, get them, get them now, June 11th and 12th. Tickets are at AriShafir.com. So, um, well, before I start this episode, and by the way, it is about drinking and boozing and fucking serving people and the fucking crazy fun shit that goes into um, doing a fucking working in the bar industry. Let's talk about a fucking trial. The trial of the century, everybody. The last trial of last century was O.J. Simpson. And the trial of this century is the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. And I'm telling you, I have not cared about any trial. I haven't even taken note until this last one. And I was on a jury trial once. That's right. I was legitimately on a jury trial. Uh, three weeks. I didn't give a shit about that one. I did care a little about this one. I was hoping, I don't know how you guys felt, but I was hoping that they both got the chair. <laughs> I really was. I mean, why do we even know about their dumb relationship? People were rooting for Johnny Depp. People were rooting for Amber Heard. And neither one of them give a fuck about you at all. If you died and you told them about it, they'd be like, why are you even troubling me with this? I don't care about some commoner dying. Yeah, I was hoping the judge would go, upset call. You're both getting fried. Electric chair for both of you. It's a typical relationship in Northern Florida. That's what they went through. Trash people. All actors and actresses are trash people. And now we're starting to understand that. It's not just Amber Heard, it's Johnny Depp too. Oh, I cut my finger and wrote the in blood uh, the name of the guy you're sleeping around, fucking around on me with. And you took a dump in my bed. Guys, this is just regular Jacksonville relationship shit. Why are we notified about this? And everyone has to weigh in. God damn, it was fucking stupid. Oh, those are good roses. I'm out in the park, I'm smelling these fucking roses. The white ones are the ones that smell the best. The white ones. Um. Yeah, how good how good was her pussy, Amber Heard? How good was her pussy that he, she could take a dump? She could take a dump on his bed, and he was like, "No, nah, I'm not going anywhere." I had a puppy once, and it took a pee, it peed on my bed. It was four months old, so it wasn't potty trained yet. You know, we were getting it there, and uh, she was up on the bed, and I guess she had to pee, and then she just peed on the bed. Um, you know, four month old puppy. I gave that puppy away. That's right. It's not Bandit. It's not Bandit. It was a previous puppy. I barely even think about it anymore. Until this trial, I hadn't thought about that puppy. I think his name was Callie or something like that. Yeah, I just gave it away. We, didn't we couldn't recover. I knew we couldn't recover. So I was like, yeah, beat it. Bandit has not peed on the bed. But imagine dumping on the bed and then not only getting fucking breakup mad, 
but going, I'm actually hard as a rock. I did not expect that at all. $15 million he won from her, and he wasn't even there for the fucking result. He wasn't even there. He was in fucking England playing a music show. That's right. His fallback career is better than any musician I know. Thousands of people. Jeff Beck played guitar for him. The guy can't lose. He's been fucking tens since he was 24 years old. Tens in Hollywood. Any nine you see, any chick that you would make you miss the subway stop that you're going off on because you're staring at it. You're like, what the fuck? Like, oh, this is West 4th Street. Fuck. And you got to go all the way to Brooklyn and then come back. You show that chick to Johnny Depp and he'd be like, make her do my laundry. I can't care anymore. I don't do good impressions. But Amber Heard, who's not a 10, She's like an eight, eight and a half. She had him wrapped around his finger, her finger. Her pussy must have been fucking wild. Anyway, let's not talk about that. Let's get into this episode. We're going to talk about bars and what it's like to work in a fucking bar. Um, both these guys, Caitlin Palufo, you've seen her on my Patreon. She did three episodes in a row in a week, a few weeks ago. Patreon.com slash Ari Shafir. Guys, I don't give you as much as Tim Dillon gives you. I don't give you as much as fucking... Chris Stefano gives you, but what I, what I do give you is occasional fucking hour long podcast, audio only, almost always, sometimes video if I'm in a car with somebody like Adrian and Caitlin, those are all video, um, but rarely and not much fucking production value. But what you're getting out of Patreon is you're saying, Ari, we're going to fucking sponsor you so you can keep saying dark shit, getting canceled constantly because you have this fucking fallback cushion of barely enough to pay your rent. That's what I need from you guys. And you guys have given it to me, a small following on patreon that's really just donating money i'll give you an occasional shit here or there but not enough for sure not enough so i appreciate you um but let's talk about bars everybody's got a favorite bar uh why don't you weigh in in the comments on youtube if you're watching it on youtube um or i don't know tag me in an instagram post if, if you're fucking instagram.com slash ari shafir if you have a favorite bar i'm wearing a t-shirt while i do this one of my favorite bars in the world Barbado in Isabella Galapagos. Uh, I generally don't talk about names of places on podcasts because I don't want them ruined by tourists coming in. But the exception to that is two things. One, if you already know about it, like if I'm talking about the Eiffel Tower, I'm like, You're, the word's out on the Eiffel Tower. And two is if you can't probably get there, it's almost an impossibility to get there. It's crooked a little bit, right, Marissa? I um, should probably have corrected it before I even mention it. So uh, if there's some fucking, uh, I don't know, some place, some bar in the top of the Himalayas, go ahead. I'll tell you about it because how are you going to get there? You know, I'm not going to tell you about fucking interesting places in New York. Find your own path. Make your own way in the world. God damn, these are good smelling roses. And I went to Barbado in the Galapagos. I went right after COVID. So nothing was fucking open. I mean, nothing was open. It was so fucking cool. I did that with uh, with um, the Galapagos and with the Amazon. Let's see if these smell. Not really. Not really. Um, when I went to the Amazon, it had just opened up. So we stayed in a 60 fucking person lodge. And it was just me and my boyfriend. So it was like just us. It was crazy. It was so cool. And the Galapagos was no different. It was like we'd be scooped with snorkeling or something like that. And they'd be like, oh, it's, nobody's here. Is this normal? They go, oh, no, it's not normal. Generally, there's like 17 boats here. We got lucky with the timing. COVID was really good for me. <laughs> I'm sorry if you had a fucking grandparent who died, but I didn't know them. So, uh, so we went to this bar on a small island in Galapagos. It's not like the main island. It's harder to get to, and it's called Barbado, and they have endemic drinks. They have a local fucking brew. Endemic. Not pandemic. Endemic. And I got a t-shirt, because who cares? You're not going to fucking get there. They were cool people. They were cool, chill people. And I drank a fucking rum-based drink out of a coconut. And I just sat there and fucking the ocean was behind me. I think I have a picture. The lighting is wrong, but maybe I'll, I'll put it up on the YouTube right now. And you know what? I'll post, I'll post a picture of it on, uh, on my Instagram. What did they say? Tuesday? I'll post, it, I'll post it later today so you guys see what I'm talking about. God, that was a fucking nice bar. I smoked a fucking... Ecuadorian cigarette cigar. Rwani, I forget what the name of it is. It's like the warrior from from Ecuador that tried to fight off the conquistadors. He was on the cover of it. God damn. This is getting boring for you guys, I can already tell. But what I'm saying is go out and find your bars. Go out and find your bartender and tip them well, you guys. 
Tip them well because they're getting you drinks. And it's one of the easiest jobs in the world. You can't really, it's not a chef thing. You can't fucking mix a drink in a somewhere. You know how it is. It's Manhattan. Two parts of this, one part of this, shake it up and give it to me. But they are giving it to you. And they're slammed. And they just want to go with fucking uh, fuck customers and, 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 you know, get off and get drunk themselves. And they're not doing it so they can find you some great inebriants like they did for me at Barbado in the Galapagos. So find your favorite bar, five your favorite bartenders, and tip them, you guys. Don't forget to tip your bartender. Because why not? Just tip everybody. Let them live like the kings that they are. I'm Ari Shafir. This is episode... Oh, I forgot. The fucking sponsor. You know what? Why do you drink? Why do you drink so much? Because you're fucked in the head. You got serious problems. You know? Alcoholism is there to bury your fucking problems. So let's start today's podcast sponsor. Today's episode is... Today's episode of Ari Shafir Skepatek is brought to you by BetterHelp. Guys, BetterHelp.com is a online therapy. It's not a crisis hotline. If you're looking for a fucking crisis hotline, go to a fu- I don't know. There's, well, there's none. There's, 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 uh, they don't sponsor podcasts. But BetterHelp.com is online therapy. It's a uh, you, you can you can they meet you match you up with a fucking uh, qualified therapist. You can message them at all hours of the day, and they'll get back to you in a timely fashion. You don't have to get in your car because you're drunk because you've been drinking to bury whatever pain you have. Well, with BetterHelp.com. You can find a way to not drink your troubles away and instead drink for fun with friends. Instead of being that sad drunk who cries at the bar to a bartender who doesn't really give a fuck, you can do that later with your online therapist at BetterHelp.com. And if you go to BetterHelp.com slash Ari, use the promo code Ari at checkout, you can get 10% off your first month. Guys, get right in the head. You've been fucked up for too long. You've been burying your shit with drugs and alcohol. Too many mosquitoes here. And now there's a better way. BetterHelp.com. Use promo code Ari. 10% off your first month. All right, let's start the episode. Like I said, like I said, find your bartender, find your favorite bar. You know the ones, you recognize them. They're there over and over again. That redhead from that one bar, you know? The dude who runs that other bar, fucking, you know? And the tatted up chick who runs it on, you know, that jazz night. I fucking love you guys. The ones over there where I get the fucking, Joe DeRosa, he's one of your favorite bartenders. Tip them, you guys. Don't just go one. If you like them, fucking get a little drunk. Start throwing fives in. Change the fucking game. I'm Ari Shafir. This is episode 474 or something. Three. Maybe three. Maybe three or two. Maybe three. Of Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank. Tip your bartender with Colm Terrell and Kalen Palufo. Starts now. <laughs> There's a, there, have you guys seen like the, the jokes of a group? That are exactly the same. Yeah. When every comic does it. Yeah. I've gone up to Pleasant Avenue. In Is it Pleasant Avenue up in the Bronx? You yeah. Know, or is it Arthur Avenue, maybe? Um, mm. And uh, some of the Italian places, they have all the t shirts that it's always just like, oh, I'm going to yeah. tell him a joke you'll never forget yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Gabagool. Yeah. Or forget about it. Yeah. It's just like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we will forget this. Yeah. All the, the, the Mexican comics in LA, they all had the same jokes and they were all accuse each other of doing it. My grandmother rubbed butter into my wounds. <laughs> so like, yeah, dude, that's just the fucking. I can't even tell do. if you're making fun of them, like, or is that literally what they've said? That is one of their like. T- it's just like, like a joke they would all do. The, butter the, in the wounds. Yeah, and then you go. It's like something like Karana, Karana, Sarita, Sarana, something like that. I barely remember it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I once got stung by a scorpion, and they stuck my finger in butter. Is that a really? real thing? Latinos. Oh, I'm not Latino. I'm Italian. I know. Who stuck but... it in there, though? My mom. Oh. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Wait, that... did you, were you stung on your finger? Though? Yeah, I got stung okay. on my finger as a kid by a scorpion, and they just put mm. it in butter, and then they drove me to the hospital. I mean, Mexicans are resilient, <laughs> so maybe it does come from a good place. There's probably some science behind Something. the butter. Yeah. It's not recommended, because now what happened was they discovered- That's cross-cultural. It. No, but they discovered science, and then they were like, all right, let's just take the thing from butter that actually works and make it into the That's proper Neosporin? Thing. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. It's obviously let's Neosporin. Let's do some research on actual butter. In, yeah. If you go to Cancun, the butter tastes very- <laughs> <bad>. Medicinal. <laughs> um, so we're here talking to two former bartenders. Yeah. Yes. You're done. I'm out. I met you in America as a bartender, Colin Terrell. And Caitlin Palufo, um, mm. I did not meet you as a bartender, Caitlin. No, thank God, I would have been very rude. Yeah, <laughs> no. Like by the end, tempered? I was I was real mad about it. <laughs> yeah. <It's> the juice. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be happy Get out. When, you're, when you're a bartender, right? <laughs> happy? No, I mean, you no. gotta be pleasant. 
you have to be pleasant and i would be pleasant and then i would turn around and the strings would cut and be like ha and just oh, yeah, oh, yeah it depends tough. though yeah because i i've been a, the grumpy bartender and some people mm-hmm. like the grumpy bartender because yeah. they just want their drinks mm-hmm. and they like that you just like the, the no nonsense whatever type of thing mm-hmm. i do like so yeah let's talk about a bunch what you want in a bartender what and then mostly what it was like being a bartender but there's some times where a waiter will come over or something and it's like hi and it's like just bring me the fucking shit say do we need anything else and walk away i'm mm-hmm. with somebody or i'm alone i don't want to talk to being you. alone yeah. there's nothing worse you go into a bar and it's quiet and you go oh great i can just have a few hours to myself and not talk to anyone mm-hmm. and then the bartender comes up so why are you in town for and he's yeah. like fuck <laughs> off come on <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They come up. They're like, "Are you okay? What's what's going on? Can I get you anything?" The it's best like, thing you can—I'll tell you what I need. <laughs> <laughs> Space. Yeah, yeah. Instead of come Clint Eastwood, <laughs> you get out of my face. <laughs> yeah, you flip a coin out of <laughs> whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Line them up. <laughs> but if I had the balls, I would just go. Listen, you don't need to pretend to be my friend. I'll tip you well. Just keep them coming and fuck mm-hmm. off. You'll you never know? say that though. No, no. I've never no. been. Has that anyone ever said that to you as a bartender? No, bartenderess. That's no, they, they would just bartender. <laughs> even before they don't when use it that anywhere. They, they wouldn't have said that. Yeah. that's outdated. Yeah. No, I would be a cocktail waitress. <laughs> if <laughs> fifty years ago, I wouldn't be a bartender. Right. <laughs> I'd yeah. be in a small skirt selling a, cigars. A bear maid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I uh, I've never said it to someone, and no one's ever said it to me. But they expect. I feel like with women, they expect you to be cheerful. Uh huh. You know? Yeah, I have to have this kind of voice. Thank you so much. You yeah, know. there is yeah. that thing of, mm-hmm. and when a woman bartender, you you want the thought of like that could be my girlfriend. If yeah. I play this right tonight. <laughs> I could. It's possible. Yeah, but it, it, for me, it depends. And I learned this because first of all, the tipping culture is uh, crazy. Do you, do, do you bartend in Ireland? No. Okay. No. And I would never do it in Ireland because now. it's 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 you don't get paid enough. It's just yeah. a, it's just a flat rate more or less. Mm-hmm. It's a decent wage, but um, tipping. I learned early on. It's like. You can give great service, yeah. let's say, to eight tables or whatever, mm-hmm. and they'll all give you 20%. Or you can give mediocre service to like 20 tables, and they'll all give you 18%. Yeah. So it's like, the ser- the better my service, my tips aren't going up. I'm better off just having loads of people. Because even if it's bad, they'll go, oh, here's 15%. Like, Yeah, they're like, never going to go to zero. Yeah. You have to be a real no. fucking white chick, 44-year-old cunt. Yeah. To like go, like, <laughs> you're getting nothing. Or a different type of people. <laughs> Black people, well, they were already going to give you another, or Jews, yeah, blacks yeah. and Jews. Oh, uh, no, the, the worst Jews, too. We're the worst Jews too. aren't necessarily the worst tippers, actually, I don't think. Jews it's, get a bad rap as being uh, stingy or cheap, but really, we're quite, like, not, we just don't want to waste money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're so, never over-tipping. Right, we're not over-tipping, mm-hmm. and we're not, like, we're like, they do good service, you should reward them. But it's like, but hey, the the whatever didn't come, so it is 2% off. Mm-hmm. You have to take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the yeah we never got here. our bread. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we should get a discount. Yeah. But then the tip will be fine. Yeah. Eh, yeah. I don't know. I've what always you... found that it's young people, like people under 25 are bad tippers, and then people who are not from this country are bad tippers. Sure, because they don't, mm-hmm. they have no culture. I, I saw an Australian uh, waitress once. I got some fucking kangaroo steak and I, uh, whatever. I tipped like 20%, 20 something percent. And she was like, she came back. She goes, Are you sure? And I'm like, Fuck. No, not anymore. Oh. What do you mean? Are you sure? Because it's like they just don't do it. They just do round up. Oh, they just yeah. don't tip there, and it's like, and I'm like, no, it's too late. But then I started talking to her, and I was like, you see, so you guys don't get tipped here, because I worked in service, sort of, mm-hmm. you know, this door guy and stuff. But uh, she goes, no, we just get paid. We get paid twenty five bucks an hour instead of like you guys. That's what do you guys good. get? And I was like, oh, in California at the time, it was like two dollars fifty cents. Yeah, mm. below minimum wage. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, what makes you work hard if you don't get tips? And she goes, to keep a job that pays $25 an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, we yeah. totally yeah. forget about uh, yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, like, I should do a good job because it's my job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. keeps an accountant working? It's not yeah. fucking dividends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, there are a lot of, um, I think my restaurant before I left, they were talking about going to 20 bucks an hour and just getting rid of tipping altogether. Wow. They're starting to do that in Brooklyn just because they are raising the minimum wage. Uh-huh. Before, when I started, it was, I think it was $6 an hour and then you would get tips. Six an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you would get tips. You and get I was, tips. I was and that's tax free, right? Money. Yeah. You never reported the tips. Yeah. And then when you do your taxes, they you, you go to a guy and you say, I it was a tipping pool. 
and then you get more money back on your taxes. Because you're saying I had to tip out from my tips yes. that I also didn't get. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so we were, I was making good money. It was fine. But now they're like, it's not sustainable now that we have to pay people $11 an yeah. hour on top of them getting tipped. Yeah. So they're like, they're just going to move it to like a like a flat Yeah, fee. but if I go into that bar, is there going to be signs? Do not tip the on staff. the on the receipt. It, it says, says do not do tip. Not tip. Uh, please, we take it's care like, of our waste stuff. It's like do not yeah. do, do not, not feed the animals yeah. at the zoo. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Please, you know what exactly. I saw? I always saw when it was like when it was like party of six or more. Like we added eighteen percent yeah. majority, but it's like they never mention that. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just on oh. there, and you're like, yeah. you motherfucker. Like I I would have given you twenty two, whatever, but like you just weren't gonna met hoping to get. Yeah. Thirty-eight. I, that's that's scummy, though. I would always mention it. Yeah, I always just let you know. They always put it on the the menu that you already given back by the time you yeah. get your your check, and it's yeah. at the bottom and very small. <laughs> mm. You're like, mm, this sounds like a scam. I was at a place in Austin, and they said like, when I got the check, like, hey, just so you know, I don't know if you were at the back of the menu, but we do a that what you said, mm -hmm. and he made sure to like make a speech, like we do a normal amount. Um, so we put in there a livable wage for the wait staff and the mm -hmm. cooks. If you want to tip on top of that, it's fine. But just so you know, like that's what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, cool. It makes me want to like go to the place more. Yeah, but and I feel I, I, when you're when you're expected to tip, and they go, no, no, we don't do the tip thing here. It still it would make me feel still expected mm -hmm. to. You still feel yeah, like, I'd, all right, I'll give you ten percent more. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'll just leave twenty bucks on the table or something. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you're doing something. Wrong. I haven't done it though. Now I'm I've I've had to like fix myself at times because I tip so heavily. Mm -hmm. Especially when I used to be bartending and it was everywhere I'd go, I'd just get a shot and then I'd throw 20 on the table. Just the mm -hmm. never ending 20 is something we had. Oh, that's a good one. How much do fucking bartenders tip when you go drinking? Oh, oh I, insane. I've, I've earned $600 and then go out after work and then you'd wake up with 200. If yeah. You're like, Damn. Like crazy. <laughs> it's like, I, but I, I never. What are you proving? I never considered it my <laughs> no. money. It's just yeah. like I had no. the money. It's, it's the universe's it's, money. <laughs> yeah. If you go down to. When I was in the financial district and um, working down there, they called it the never ending 20. So that you slip out for a, like a smoke break, you'd mm -hmm. run into the bar across the road, you'd do a shot of whiskey with the bartender, and you'd give him $20. And then on yeah. his break, he, he, he would come back, give you the $20 back. <laughs> and then you would just constantly be bouncing mm -hmm. around the neighborhood. That's what we used to do with podcasts, where like, well, it's, when there was like 20 podcasts, and it was like, pay people a little for the podcast. Like, well, it's just the same people, like, just pass the money around. And I'm like, Pass it around though. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. not it's every one of us have have a podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like <laughs> let those people who don't fucking cash in. I uh I bartended in Crown Heights and Jew Black. Uh both. It was a mix. Yeah, that's I, right there. I moved before Jew it was Blacks. too gentrified. So okay. I was there for eight years and I bartended there for five mm. and it was a fucking party because there's like seven blocks or yeah. seven bars on this block. And so we would just after we closed. Whoa. We would go from bar to bar to bar to bar, and then every time the bartender came to us, they would get free drinks, and then we would go there, and we would get free drinks, and yeah. then we would just tip a shit ton of money. You tip so much, tip yeah. so much. Mm -hmm. Also, what would happen then? Because like you almost feel like you owed them. So let's say I, there was a bar when I worked in Woodside in Queens, which is just a little mini Irish neighborhood. You'd go to a bar every night, and I'd be tipping, 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 and then that bartender maybe they they don't go out partying as much, but they mm -hmm. get like one day a month when their kids are to go for it. Yeah. yeah, so they would pop pop in, and they'd end up giving you a hundred dollars nearly because it felt like mm -hmm. they owed it back. You yeah. have to show face. You got to go around to the neighborhood, so it's like you're working after work because you got to go. Oh, I haven't been to that bar in a while. Let me yeah, go in yeah. there, and then you then you well in Woodside, I'd buy all the regulars drinks too. So every time I yeah. walk into a bar. If I recognized anyone at the bar, I'd go send him a drink, send him a drink, send him a drink. So then, Damn. Yeah, but that means then they would start coming back to my bar the next oh, yeah. day. Free drinks is a nice part of it. But I, I, because uh, you just know who all the sin people are. Yes. Yeah. Do they call it sin. No, but <laughs> just the the fun people, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. good people. And whenever I go to a bar for the first time that I know I'll be back to, I'll tip heavily. Yeah. Uh, right away, just to be like, when I come back, you fucking come to me. <laughs> how, do you, how, do you like, how do you like this move, Brody Stevens used to do it? As soon as he goes to the bar, he throws 20 in the table. I'm like, that's for you to start with. I'll be back. So they'll just know, like, oh, I'm getting you guys. I'm getting you drinks. I mean, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. If you're going to be there for a few hours. <laughs> there's some, <laughs> yeah, there's something maybe about the New York. You go, what do you think? It's the first time I saw $20, yeah, you prick. Yeah. Well, oh, no, no. oh, let's go serve this guy yeah. first. But I'm just saying, like, you're not going to get stiffed. Here's already you're getting paid a tip. So remember, like, if you see me, I, like, jockeying for position, just fucking get me one. I understand that logic, but there's something about no. it. It's like, you, you can't buy me. I don't like me. being bought. Yeah. Yes. Oh, don't wow. you that's the job. buy me. <laughs> yeah, that is the job. Oh, I was a Jordan. I love a, being bought. Don't make it so blatant. Yeah, yeah. 
Honestly, I, that's I, I'm like a, a whore, case but I, be coy about it. That's <laughs> like a case I walk out of here drunk without tipping later. Oh, yeah. You I know, it's like, hey, you're getting it. Don't worry. That also makes me nervous. It's like, how drunk are you going to get? <laughs> Am I going to have to carry you out of here? But I, I'm very forgiven. If you're so drunk that you walk out without tipping, I feel like that's not. I don't hate that. Do you ever write in uh, a tip on a on a check when they did zero? Oh yeah. No. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, oh, that's access to your money. I'm that's taking it. Against the law. I, yeah, I break the law. I'm a legend. <laughs> I'm yeah. a renegade. <laughs> I would never. I love when people go, "That's illegal." I'm like, "You think I don't break the law? I do drugs. That's All number day. one." <laughs> yeah, I buy I've, graffiti. Like, what are you talking? No, no, I would never. I don't know if I've ever. I can't remember offhand stiffing people. Oh, you know what I've done when it's cash and they don't tip. So I just take it from the boss. So what happens is, let's oh. say it's a hundred dollar b- bill, and they gave it's a hundred dollar tab. They give me a hundred dollars, no tip. I come around, and when I go to the register, it's like fifty dollars worth of drinks, and then I, and then he tipped me fifty dollars. Right. Oh, so, you, you make a bigger tip. You don't go like ninety and he tipped me. Nah. <laughs> Plus tip also, and when you're working in cash, I think there's a common rule that it's like two from two for the house, one for me. <laughs> okay, this <laughs> no, is why I should my never. questions. How much did you steal from work? Oh, I never. Stick, yeah, sticky fingers. Never drinks? Oh, uh, well, well, shots, yes. That's allowed. There's an allowable That's amount allowed, of theft. Yeah. I would never take money, the, uh, but the, w- I would pour myself free drinks n- all the time. But New York, the, 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 the stealing by bartenders from the place that they work in New York is notorious. Like, it's known as the place, because it used to be all cash. So right. And then you'd just be like in those old machines, like, bling, bling, bling. So, like, if someone buys a... Fucking three drinks, you ring in two. Yeah, and or, or they, they they order Grey Goose, you just put in Smyrna or whatever the cheap shit is, and then you got an extra. And then at the end of the night, you've just your cash is over, and you've, they don't see exactly how far down the fucking they see whatever. You, they see you press if they have cameras, they see you pressing the money, and now fucking Palufa's a goody yeah. two shoes. I am. Sees I'm it. a goody two shoes. I, yeah. I found a hundred dollars on the floor. Should we give it to charity? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> when I do find money on the floor, I give it to a homeless you person. You are crazy. You <laughs> are goody crazy. Goody two shoes and Eddie's sticky fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but So they would catch you on the camera, but they see you putting the thing in, you know? So they see you doing that. Right. And then, but, you, what, but you are ringing something in. But at yeah. the end of the night, then your float is up a hundred bucks. And if someone doesn't tip, I'll take it. Or if my boss pissed me off that day, I'll take it. Or I, or if I just feel like stealing, I would take no, it. Oh my god! I had That's a chick. I had a chick on my Patreon. I used to work for a Wendy's drive drive through, and she was so weed out of there. And but it was like, but it was like the word is like buy a coke or something, so I could yeah, put it in two cups. And 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 eventually she got greedy. She goes, "You don't even have to buy the coke. I'll just get." And people are like, "Who's coming to the drive through without buying anything?" That's yeah. crazy, idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, no, I would uh, I would do free drinks a lot. Free drinks, and then we would way. do um uh they would we would do mistakes. Is this a mistake? You know, oh, like you accidentally make two of the same cocktail. Oh, and yeah. then you just because I mean and I wasn't what, a great the one. Yeah, and then okay. you drink the one that was a whoopsie, and then um yeah, so I would get drunk during yeah. bartending, and that to me I was like <laughs> that's acceptable. <laughs> How much of that happened? Oh, oh, every night. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you'd have You're no idea. You're handling it. It's in your hand. Yeah, it's so hard no. not to. And then. Yeah, and then sometimes, yeah, I'd get wasted. Yeah, I I never really had a job though where it was like too super encouraged. Some people work in bars where the the owner comes in, everyone's doing shots, mm-hmm. they go go crazy, go nuts, they're yeah. dancing on the tables and stuff. <laughs> Mine was always like a secret thing where I'd like pour myself a coke and then I just end up like filling it up with Bacardi or whatever. So it looks like I'm just drinking Pepsi or whatever. Oh yeah, I would get a mug and I would fill it with red wine and yeah. I would drink it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'd make like an Aperol spritz if I was doing brunch. And then, and, uh, but I had I had like a code. I was like, we're waiting till noon and then yeah. we're going to do it. Can oh, we I, bring back Summer of the Spritz? I feel like I love Summer of the Spritz. Yeah, I feel mm. like that should it's be at so the cellar good. especially. Michelle Wolf really got it going. Yeah. And we were all like, yeah, Spritz is fucking refreshing as fuck. <laughs> They're so good. Yeah. <laughs> They're and delightful. it does get you there too. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, you just need three spritzes you need and a you're few. having a nice time. Yeah. 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 It is a lot of sugar though, so make sure you drink water. Is it? Yeah, it's a uh, lot of sugar. That's where it gets you. Mm-hmm. One time yeah. they made the, during Summer of the Spritz, the old Summer of the Spritz, they like made one and they didn't do the orange sli- slice. I'm like, no orange slice? I'm like, well, it's the alcohol is what you want. I'm like, I mean, it, Am I regularly <laughs> here or not? Do you guys respect me or? I mean, that's so shitty. You gotta so have shitty. it. You need the <laughs> ens- essence yeah. of the orange. Of yeah, course. and you have a peeler right there. Like, why wouldn't you do I that? I mean, I know. That, they, that they was act rude. as if you're like boot. Some, yeah. yeah, dude, that's the drink. Yeah. yeah. Ice straw, Jesus. Yeah. This guy. <laughs> this guy always asks for. So you would get fucking bomb drunk. Would you ever throw up at work? I have. Yeah. Wow. I know. That's that. irresponsible. Oh yeah, I've, for sure. I've never thrown. I don't really throw up though. That's that's Irish. one of my issues. Yeah, 
Well, the but thing I was, have fallen, oh, I've fallen asleep and stuff like that. <laughs> I've done loads of stuff, or I'd like um, the next. I've had a lot of waking up the next day and then I go, ah! and then I'm like ringing the person in the morning, and I go, I don't know if I cashed up, I don't know if I oh closed the God. doors. Mm-hmm. I've done it where I've ran down, like woke yeah. up and had to run down to the bar to make sure that I even locked the bar. Like I wouldn't remember leaving at all. That's wow. so Especially, funny. Yeah. So because yeah. you get fucking wasted. I remember the second day that I was like bartending on the books, finally, you know, mm-hmm. and. Uh, at the place called Mayfield. <laughs> what do you mean bartending on the books finally? Like um, like I was a server for two years and then they moved me up to bartender. Okay. And uh, so it was my like second night and I was, my uh, my manager was like my really good friend and I would, be, they want you to buy shots and do shots with everybody and so I was hammered by mm. the end of it and he was like, just go home, I'll take care of this. <laughs> and I was like, I can do it. And he's like, yeah. bitch, no you can't, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and so Keith sent me home and then wow. he closed up and he was like, just don't get that drunk. That's great. <laughs> I love too that's not a fireable offense at that mm-hmm. at that job. It's just like, hey, I, tomorrow I gotta talk to you. You're yeah. not gonna listen right now. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Christine Okerson used to do that. She used to like, be like, I should tell, when she worked at the stand, she's like, I should tell them how to run this business. Not, And you'd see her and her teeth were just red. No. And it's like, Christine, first of all, never is the time. And definitely not now. <laughs> mm. Yeah, we. I would get hammered. I threw up one time because it was a staff party. And so we, we were open until a certain amount. So you start drinking. And then we close. And then it's all the staff. And then I'm, I'm still serving everybody. Yeah. And then just went to the bathroom, threw up. Came right back and started shooting Jaeger. I've had yeah, I've had situations where I worked. I'd worked the night before. You close the bar at four, but mm-hmm. then all of the other bartenders, whoever stays there till like seven or eight a.m., mm-hmm. then you'll go to the bar that opens at eight a.m. I sat there all day drinking. Mm-hmm. I'd go have lunch, have a shower, then I'd go straight to work, Ugh. and I'm having a coffee, and I haven't been home. I'm just fucking like that, and then I'm like. <laughs> And there's a balance because you can't sober up too much because then you'll crash. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you can't stay on the same level. So you kind of have to bring it down. <laughs> like a, it's like a plane. Yeah, ride it's, it it's, hard. A, it's like a plane in the altitude. You really, yeah. you really got to steer it like a pilot. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. that uh, Coke booze line too. There is where you got to like okay, like this, from what I've heard, I've never done this. Where it's like I got to do enough Coke to be able to drive home. <laughs> to be able to, <laughs> to get me to that place, but not too much Coke that I'm gonna get road rage on the way yeah. home. I've, yeah, I've had customers at the bars where they see me and I'm like wobbling trying to take the order and they're like, come here. And they bring me into the bathroom to do coke. Like, really? Like, to try, even you out? To try to help me out, yeah. Aww. Then you start faking it. You're like, oh, I'm so, oh, no. I'm yeah. so like, uh, <laughs> you can help me. <laughs> and that's how I see him. I'm drunk, come on. Come on. You know the fucking deal. Yeah. yeah. Hey, let's stop right now and do your plugs or whatever you guys got a uh, podcast and stuff. Oh, sure. Yeah, let's do it early. Let's not wait till fucking no one's listening anymore. All right. I got a podcast called Good Time Gal. It's about drunk stories. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. I'll do that podcast. Do you have guests or no? Yeah, I have guests. I'll have you both on. I can be a guest. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you seem so (laughs) busy all the time. As soon as I'm done with my special, then I'm I'm in for fucking doing everybody's podcast. (laughs) I've got my podcast called The Column Terrell Podcast, available everywhere. Two R's, two L's. Actually, three L's total? Oh, yeah, in total. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> well done. <laughs> oh, I guess my name is Caitlin Palufo. <laughs> Caitlin Palufo. Yeah, if you didn't know which one said uh, yeah. the drunk, drunk, what is it? Drunk Woke Podcast? Good Time Gal. Good Time Gal. That yeah. was Caitlin. That's me. And Colum, that could be a girl's name. Colum? Uh, it could, it could be. Really can't. If you didn't Caitlin know. really can't be a boy's name. No. Sorry. You know what? You're so outdated. You're such a boomer. I mean. That is names. gender norms. Yeah, what is Names wrong are with over. You, you got to get over it. <laughs> names are over, especially in June yeah. during this Pride Month. Yeah. To have that kind of ignorance. Well, look at your shirt. You're doing great. Oh, yeah. This, this Pride is Month. from Girls Middle School. <laughs> BHS See? Girls Middle School, 20, 2014. I fucking dated this chick who was 17. She was going to, in, in that state, I dated her. It was fine. Um, and Jesus then, Christ. Yeah, How I, old were you? I was 40. What, 2014? So I was, I was 40. But. I actually started dating her at 16, but we didn't do anything. We didn't go under the shirt till uh, till another year passed. Yeah, you picked her <laughs> what up. What you, did you guys talk about? He, he was parked, <laughs> Not much. He was parked outside the fucking yeah, high school on our, bar- on our uh-huh. birthday. Yeah, I'd waiting. pull up in my Trans Am, and she'd be like, my boyfriend's so cool. Yeah, you'd be smoking. <laughs> you'd be leaning against the car smoking. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Throw it out. Like, yeah. She, had no ch- she didn't have a chance, dude. Uh-huh. <laughs> her name was Caitlin also. They're like, damn, Caitlin, your boyfriend's rad. <laughs> He's so awesome. Yeah, uh, she'd come out. I'd immediately blast like, bam, 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 
<laughs> Flipping the principal the yeah. bird. <laughs> Get out of here. It's public property, bitch. You're not my principal anymore. <laughs> Old man Terwilliger. You, you went to school with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, when are you? <laughs> shut up. All of you are fresher than me. You're younger than me. Yeah, shut up, shitty pants. Oh, man. How very Jerry Seinfeld of you. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry never did anything with that girl. Did he just brought her to the Knicks game? He brought her just to a Knicks game. I think that's all he did, wasn't it? Well, I think he dated her. Did yeah, he, date he dated it? her. Like, it was a different time. Everybody was fine with it. Nobody really was like, nobody even thought twice about it. It's a shame. That <laughs> Everybody really thought was she weird. was so lucky. Yeah. They were like, oh, look at you. It's a, it's a shame they, they they got rid of that. The weirdest what? one The weirdest <laughs> one was, uh, hey, no, by no, the no. way, you know I'm making this up, right? <laughs> oh, no, I have oh, no yeah, idea. Oh, yeah, I'm totally making that up. <laughs> <laughs> this is a thrift store shirt. <laughs> you, the way yeah. you reacted, I'm like, you're, you're playing along, but too I, well. I, <laughs> I thought, for, I was no, like, Ari. I thought she got it eventually. No. She got it. Once I was like, well, first I started dating her at 16 and I waited till under the shirt stuff. I was like, you gotta know it's a like, joke now. I'm very gullible, just to let you know. <laughs> Extremely gullible. That's one of those where you're like, that's, by the way, so you did believe it. There's no right, you can't just be like, fuck you and leave. Everyone's like, wants everyone to react the way they want to. If something was real, you'd be like, it takes a minute. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta. It'd be like a week later, you'd be like, I think, you know what? It's I think like, I'm Ari out of my life. Yeah. Ari. That seems like something you would do. That's the whole thing. Well, I'm looking at you being like, well, I know he's not a monster. Yeah. So, but he can to... pull. Yes, dude. Yes. <laughs> Genuinely, I don't even know if I could, would be able to get a 17 year old girlfriend. Like, I don't know if I, like, how would you even. How would you even? How do they do that? Is it just give them free drugs? What is the, <laughs> like, how do you even start a conversation with a seventeen-year-old? Yeah, what? How would you connect? In any, there would it, be a way to. Connect. It has to be your niece's friend. There would friend be a way to something. connect. You meet them at a barbecue. Your niece's friend. Something. I mean, I can connect with my nephew's friends on sports, right? Yeah. So we can actually have a legit adult conversation. Like yeah. with with so there has to be that equivalent. I mean, so I heard you guys are all poly, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you prefer, Gen Z or millennials? <laughs> I'm whatever gender you want to fuck. Come on. <laughs> Where are you going? Stop pepper spraying me. I have noticed the new kid kids, like the 22 year olds, and both, like they the dress is like completely non gender based. Mm -hmm. Like dudes wear like skirts. Unironically, they're not even like trying it's just like whatever they can find at a thrift store yeah you know and it's like you trans Disgusting. like dude fucking grow up trans shut up I'm like, oh oh <laughs> like, why? oh because of my dress you're like yeah all right sorry yeah they're so far beyond yeah. us <laughs> but it is still like yeah that's silly to us <laughs> yeah to that our was generation that was yeah. people made careers doing what you're doing that Eddie was like is Eddie, well, Eddie Izzard is a is a trans. He went trans. Yeah, he's, he's full of trans. But yeah. he was always a cross dresser. Though. Cross dresser. But I was talking more like when Tim Dillon would be wear a dress and scream about stuff. Like that's like it's a joke. Right. Yeah. It yeah. used or, to be a joke in movies. Nia is. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. The, who's the? Some like it hot. Right. Was that that? Tyler uh, Perry. He has some. It's an old like whatever movie, and it was two guys Tyler. wearing wearing dresses and yeah. pretending to be girls. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, like, uh, what's it called? The Wayans Brothers? The Wayans Brothers, yeah, yeah. white chicks. White chicks. Oh, yeah, yeah white chicks. They did white face and yeah. vagina face? I don't know what you would call that. Trying on? Uh, Yeah, pussy face. Pussy face, yeah. <laughs> pussy white face. Anyway, whatever. Let's get back to fucking Bart. The point is I don't have a fucking 16-year-old girlfriend. I'm sorry. I'm sorry <laughs> but you said it's so angry. The point is I fucking don't. <laughs> yeah. Remember that scene in uh, Train Spotting when he's like, he hooks up with a chick at the bar? Yeah, and then he, she's like, "Yeah, in the morning." Yeah, she's like, "Wait, what?" She goes, "Yeah, walk me to school." School. <laughs> That's so hot, though. <laughs> no, it's not. No, because it, you, you've already you've hot. already done the crime. That yeah. was like it. And then the, you find out what it was afterwards. You go. Have you, you ever hooked up with a famous person and you didn't know till afterwards that they were famous? No, no, me neither. <laughs> you, had you? And then we said no, no, but it could happen in L.A. where you oh, go hook yeah. up and be like, "You know who that was?" And you're like, "No, the girl I met at the bar." There's so many like little fames. Oh yeah. What okay, about what that. about serving celebrities? Oh okay. Oh, I've Good way to keep it yeah. back on topic. Yeah. Good job, Colum. Check out the Colum Terror podcast. It's all topical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah. What about serving celebrities? Oh yeah. I yeah. Did, uh, Jason Sudeikis and Olivia Wilde. I think he's oh, wow. Jason Sudeikis. Mm -hmm. And Olivia, it, it, are they dating? They they're now they broke up, but they were together at the time. Didn't That's you hear? A fun one. Didn't yeah. you hear he gave her the divorce papers during like a live event? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard just that. recently. What? Oh, he served her. Yeah. No, so they they got divorced. She's dating Harry Styles now, I think. Anyway. Whoa, that's trading up. 
No offense, Sudeikis. No. No, I think Sudeikis is hotter than Styles. Styles hotter. Is like, We're not Styles talking is... about hotter. We're talking about fucking fame and. F- yeah. You think oh, Harry's, I see. Harry Styles yeah. is massive. Yeah. yeah. Harry Sudeikis is Harry fucking Styles lucky to be alive. Pussy. Hand. No, he's got Ted Lasso. He's doing good. You don't watch Ted Lasso. Which one's, Ted, which one's Sudeikis? Sudeikis is Wasn't the, one of the SNL league? guy. Uh, uh, which one is one from the league that did that Rafi played Rafi in the league? I don't know. I don't watch that. Show. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I don't know his name. That's not Sudeikis. No, for sure not. Yeah, no, Sudeik- then, then it would for Sudeik- sure be. Oh, <laughs> Sudeikis yeah. was in a horrible bosses with yeah. Jennifer Aniston and okay a few others. Yeah, anyway. I can't believe you haven't seen Ted Lasso. But he gets he's a fucking another pussy hound. Yeah, he, he, he oh, he's in. crushed. He I, left, I love to get these guys that are alt guys, and you're like, but they they must never have sex. You're like, oh, I'm no. still a dude, he's, yeah. and I'm famous. Dude, he's the best, Jason. He, he gets yeah. it. He did like the, an Oscars or something, and he's just like wearing a tracksuit sitting on his, because they did it like over Zoom, and mm-hmm. he's like, just read something, he's like, whatever. He's wearing a tracksuit, and it's covered in stains and shit, and his girlfriend's now is like a 22-year-old Victoria's Secret model or something crazy. He's just crushing it. Yeah, that's yeah. what they wanted Melania to be. Yeah. Like, I want you to date like a, a, a fat fucking academic. And he's like, nah. Nah. <laughs> that that never happened. We're going to get Olivia Munn. Yeah, yeah. We'll get Olivia Munn. Yeah. <laughs> and my <laughs> wife was hot too. Like, it's not, I'm not going to be that guy you want me to be because I wear a suit and I talk like I'm yeah. a child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. He talks like a grown up eunuch. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I had to be like, oh, a eunuch. Oh. <laughs> First time I think I've ever used that word in a sense. Uh, okay. So, you, the, the sort of celebrities, how are they? Um, they're very nice. They sat at the bar mm-hmm. and uh, watched TV, tipped 22% or 25%. And uh, they're the most beautiful people yeah. you've ever seen. Like she walked in and Olivia not wearing Wilde. it. Yeah, not wearing any makeup. And I was like, God, that person's beautiful. And then she sits down. I was like, oh, it's Olivia Wilde. But yeah. it already registered. That's a super hot person. Yeah. 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 You just look at her like, wow, that person is stunning. That's a chick from um, Who's the Boss? The, the little girl who grew up. She's a big Dodger fan, social media person now. Whatever her name is. <laughs> Damn, who's the boss? Is too, that predates you guys. She was in Poison Ivy also. That also predates you guys. Uh, that's why she in Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. You know, she has an yeah. old time. Seven Year Itch, was she in that? The Elizabeth Hooley. Uh, fuck She's you. in all the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever, but you see her like, who the, f- she's so hot. And you're like, oh, she's an actress I know. That's something when you start meeting celebrities, even the ones that are the ugly celebrities. Are still hot. The hottest person yeah. in the room. You walk in, yeah. If they won't walk into AT&T, you're like, what the fuck? The mm-hmm. chubby chick from Boston Legal. There was a show Boston Legal. She was a chubby <laughs> chick on there. She came into the store once. I'm like, God damn, that's a fucking hot, ch- hot yeah. chubby chick. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah, that. You yeah. can't be gross on TV. No. E- yeah, so, uh, even the ugliest. Who's the ugliest people? Yeah, you started at six and a half. I'm, sh- I'm sure like Joe Pesci and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, ma- Dudes yeah. can be gross. Yeah, Well, Roseanne's probably pretty gross. Roseanne's probably gross, especially in age I Roseanne. Talk, I don't talk about women's looks, actually. Oh, oh what fuck a off. You're off the hero. Marissa, cut him out. Cut every part the of The guy out. who just said, how do I pull a 17-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was more of a, like, a, it's a puzzle. Oh. To, that, <laughs> wasn't, that had nothing to do with that sweet, sweet Thai pussy. <laughs> God. You shave that puss? Oh, okay. Ooh, you got hair yet? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, Wait, um, uh, they do shine, celebrities. Yes. They like they like glow. They, yeah. they There is a thing. There is, right? They, there's a star quality. Yeah. You know, I've noticed with that one, uh, you might disagree, cause, but Amy Schumer, anytime, you can say whatever you want, but every time I've seen her on stage, there is like a moment where you go, oh shit, there's a reason why she's so like, I, I wonder, she has like a magnetism yeah, or something. She has yeah. an it factor of everyone wanted to help her. There's two it factors I figure out. One is be everybody's little brother or sister. Draw that, that, Amy had that. And then there's the other like, so hot that people like can't even, like light up, like a um, pretty woman. She wasn't Julia not, Roberts. Yeah, nobody jerks off to her, even in her prime. It was mm. just like she just lights up a room with her smile. Yeah, she's had a great <laughs> smile. Yeah, no, I, um, Amy had that for yeah. sure. That it factor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who have you done anyone famous? Just a few. Sam Smith, I think, is his name. The wow, musician? the singer. The singer. Yeah, oh, yeah. But we one. didn't know who he was. Yeah. So we were all serving him, and we didn't know who he was. And then someone walked in. And was like, do you know who that is? And we were like, no. And he's like, it's Sam Smith. And then I was like, oh, great. And we're all Googling and playing his music and shit. Yeah. And then the, the, the person who was walking by was like, can I pay for his drinks or whatever? So then I had to go over to the guys like, no, someone at the bar got you the thing. So then Sam Smith come in, and got a photo with him and everything, you know? Oh. It's annoying because he just like doesn't need it at all. He makes no. millions. So yeah. he's like, this, but this $35 doesn't matter. The guy wanted the photo with him. And then the guy who paid for it didn't tip. 
<gasps> so we got what fucked. A cunt. We what got a fucked. jerk. What a yeah. cunt. That's awful. I heard a great story about Shaquille O'Neal. Brett Ernst, this comedian, was uh, he was bartending or waitering at somewhere. And uh, this guy was like, hey, it's my kid's birthday in the side room. I guess it was, a, it was not a bar. It was a bar restaurant. And he goes, would you mind? He goes, hey, tell you what. Let me, uh, let me finish my meal, and then I'll come say hi. And then he finishes meal, and then like played with all the kids for like an hour. <laughs> he said he was all picking them up on yeah. his arms and doing like whatever for like an hour. And then wow. he goes, C- I'll cover it. And oh, they just paid for everything. Shaq, so sweet. Shaq is the greatest man on earth. He might be the most beloved man in America. Mm-hmm. Underrated. Everyone loves him. I, I, everyone loves Shaq. Yeah. yeah. His smile also lights up a room. Yes. Shaq is the man. He's an overgrown child. It's mm-hmm. just. But he's seven foot one, 300 and and something pounds. Yeah, and he's always dancing with his kids on TikTok or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's just a fucking legend. He's great. He used to come into the store on Black Night. We had the most upscale Black Night, uh, yeah. Fat Tuesday. And he would come in, and it was just like, he's only like not even a foot taller than me. How tall are you? I'm 5'8". Okay, well, that's not the same difference. Well, 5'8 to 6'3". Close to the same difference. Yeah. And it was just like... Wait, what I, are you? 6'3". 7'1". 7'1". Seven, 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 one. Seven, one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so close. 10 inches, it's close. And then it's... What are you call them? Like 6'2". Like six, six, I'm feeling confident. Oh, really? Oh, you don't carry yourself like that. No. And um. <laughs> yeah, you got 5'11 confidence. Yeah, you do have 5'11 <laughs> confidence. Yeah. Damn. Damn. But it felt like I was like dick height on him. Yeah. Yeah. But he's always smiling. But he's but he's also four hundred pounds or something. There's crazy. that too, mm-hmm. yeah. Like so he's a big fucking guy. Yeah. 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 Dude, we had a a, a a some country singer came into the comedy store and you know, just looked like the same thing with Sam Smith, it just looked like a guy. And then the bartender was from, the the uh, cover with guy was from Indianapolis. Yeah. And we just like, Hey, this guy wants to take it and then he was just like oh, oh. <laughs> like what's going Who was on? It? I don't know, like Travis Tritt or one of those guys oh. that we like Mm-hmm. You've heard of, but you would never be able to pick out yeah. the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I um, I once on Halloween, I uh, was waitressing and I waitressed, uh, waited on Julia Stiles, and I was dressed as Dancing. a sexy Tin Man. <laughs> it was humiliating. Damn, she was hot for a while. <laughs> yeah. Like her career was. She was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ten Things I Hate About You is still good. She was in that dancing movie too, right? Save the Last Dance. Save yeah. the Last Dance. Is she hot? Because she's like weird face. She's accessible hot. Yeah. yeah, though she's hot, but like you know, like mod, like runway model hot, where she's it's like, like they the got a fucked up head. Yeah, yeah, they got a fucked up head, bro. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. there's like hot. Yeah, yeah. Just clothes hang well on them. Yo, mm-hmm. um, Emily Ratchakuski, is it? Ratchakuski, yeah. Ooh, yeah, her. She was in the bar with her parents one time. Who's Emily Ratchakuski? She was in like Blurred Lines. Remember the Blurred Lines song? Oh, uh, she had the a tall t- woman with her titties out. She's famous. She looks like a. Like, she's a famous model. She looks like a gazelle or a bird or something. She looks like a, yeah. a fuckable bird. Dude, do you ever <laughs> yeah. pass a, like a model in New York? Because they're around here. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember passing with my friends, and we all just kind of like you can't even help. You just stop, and you're like, "What? You fucking? go, you just go. That's you got to be a model. What? It doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. They're so hot. It's crazy. And your brain, your brain starts to shut down too. Cause yeah, it's like, <laughs> doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. You're not, like, it's not even like humans you, aren't shaped like this. Yeah, yeah, it's pure. It's natural art, nearly. It's not yeah. even that you yeah. want to fuck them. Well, you do want to fuck them, but it's like just, walk. You're it's stunned. not the first thing you think about. You're just like you're stunning. Yeah, <laughs> Medusa. That's what they it's are. Like they're they're real, it's times a, twenty. It's a real Medusa. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. With her good looks. But yeah. she, but she's just as good looking, like in photos, as she is in real life. You know what you say? An ugly person on TV looks amazing in real life. Mm-hmm. She's like already. She's just constantly. Yeah. Twelve out of ten. Damn. Insane. Insane. Nuts. Do you yeah. ever see people puking at your bar? Yes. I've had mm. to clean up you, puke before. Uh, that's annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Puke. Yeah, that's, that's the downside. Do you All try to like see them and be like, hey, you have to leave? Like, pre- I remember get, us getting, doing the 21 shots at 21. You know? Oh. And and this my friend Darren was like, like this, like, uh, like opening his mouth. The guy's like, you got to leave. And he was like, I didn't even puke yet. He goes, it's, you already know you're going, get out, get yeah. out. <laughs> There's no chance you're not going to puke. Get out. Uh, yeah, depends yeah. where you are. When so I've I've had loads of bar jobs. When I worked in um, up near Times Square, up in Hell's Kitchen, they were they were very the be- it was a huge bar. It was busy. There'd be hundreds of people there every night. Loads of different floors. But the bouncers or the security would mm-hmm. be constantly walking around, cutting people off, throwing people out. Whereas really, the, yeah. But when I worked in Woodside in the Irish neighborhood, because they're all Irish immigrants, the level you're allowed to get away with. There is no level. Like yeah. it just, it's it's hard to say no to someone to cut them off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. What do you? How do you do it? Because you know they're gonna. You know they're not gonna be like. Honestly, fair enough. best case scenario is they pass out asleep at the bar. I've had loads of people where there's like three people in a row all just asleep at the bar, and they just mm-hmm. you just leave them for a few hours. 
Leave them and, and then hopefully by the time you come to cash up and close out, you can get them out of the room yeah. if you're lucky. It's got to be a quiet bar. Not really, no. Well, like at, Roy- at Royale that happened? No, not Royale, no. This is back in Woodside in Queens. Where falling asleep at a bar doesn't mean you're too drunk. <laughs> in Irish culture, I don't think if you fall asleep at a bar, people th- people just go, ah, let leave them. Yeah, because yeah. they're not doing anything no, wrong to anybody. They're just there and you put... They're so taking you, up the same amount of space as they would you, if they were awake. And you start putting uh, the, you know, like the beer... Um, why would they get beer mat? You start put beer mats on their heads and stuff like Buckaroo. Yeah, and then you, wait, you, wait, you wait for the person. That's fun. That is fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just loads of funny. Well, we were at a restaurant, so like the people who would get really, really hammered at our bar was uh, just regulars. And yeah. so at one point, our manager or our owner would go up and be like, "It's time," <laughs> you know. Really? And they yeah. would just be like, "Okay." <laughs> I hated that though. I hated having to be like, "I think." You are, or what we yeah. do is like you do the dummy thing. It's like you've had enough beer. Why don't you just start drinking vodka soda or something? And they're like, okay. And then you just like barely put the smallest amount of vodka, but it's mostly just soda. It's like a big double yeah. soda. Of, of liquid. Water. I, I, I've served people just like yeah, just soda water, and mm-hmm. they and they're drinking it, thinking they're fucking getting hammered. Yeah. Put a bitters yeah. in a little bit. Yeah, like, uh-huh. you do a lot of you like just. I still charge them for the vodka. Put it in the yeah, pocket. Pocket it. Pocket <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. Ding, <laughs> Yeah, no, we. I've hardly. I think I maybe stopped serving two people the whole time I've I've bartended. We just go because <laughs> it's also yeah. a walking neighborhood. So every, all the locals just lived close. No one was driving. That's the good thing oh, about so New be like, York. Hey, you, no one. See you tomorrow. You're yeah. not done forever. I will see you again. Yeah, but you got it. It's time. Mm-hmm. There is a. I have had the guilty stuff though. Was where I know someone's driving, and mm. I'm like, please. You know. Oh yeah. When's when? When is it like? I can't serve you. Like, this is dangerous. I see you walking out with your car keys. Like, I can't. You know, and but I you can, have to just willfully ignore it? Uh, yeah, it's just it's it's, it's, a, it's just a, a difficult conversation to keep having. Mm-hmm. It was like, dude, you're driving. And then they're like, oh, I'm not going to drive. It's like, for right. sure you are. Yeah. You're dangling your keys. Also, yeah. you're trying to reason with someone who has no judgment skills Yeah, right yeah. now. And then apparently, I don't know if this is true, though, but I was told, like, I if you're a bartender, you serve someone, mm-hmm. they crash their car, you, you can get prosecuted. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Has anyone ever been prosecuted for serving somebody? Never. I've never heard I've of I've never it. heard of that. They said like in that. Alaska, they said they went way hard on it because it was a real problem in Anchorage because everything's so spread out that people would drive drunk. So yeah, they, like, you really came down on the bars. Like, if somebody, no, if they're driving drunk, you are also driving but how drunk. But do you, you, how can I be held responsible for what you do when you leave? Also, if you just had three shots right before you went in there. Yes. Yeah. Then you're like... Oh, right, they had two beers. Mm. How am I supposed to know that there's still three more coming down? Yeah. We're supposed to... We were given a lot of credit for being people who are just like, I just graduated college uh-huh. and yeah. I just... I'm trying to be a star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, focus. I'm working for tips. Yes. So whatever the, they say, I'm like, yeah, absolutely, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah you are intuitive. inebriating them. Does That's everyone's your job. drunk on the road at this hour? Come on, get yeah. out there. Wait, you're not paying for an Uber at this rate? The, yeah. the, it's surging right now. Come yeah. on. Me and Rogan walked out of a pool hall bar um, it's somewhere, maybe Atlanta or somewhere, and we saw a guy... Uh, standing in front of his back back door, back passenger door, and um, and he was just standing there looking at it for some. We were like, "What's he doing?" As we were getting into our car, and then we realized he had keys in his hand. He was trying to get into the back door. Oh no! So funny. For a while, and then he just kind of like realized. He looked up and saw the driver door. And was like, Ugh, and then he went over the driver's door. And Rogan started to drive like, "Dude, dude, dude, give him space." <laughs> oh yeah. He, he got in his car, immediately went through the first red light, and then zoomed off. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> like, New York. I'm telling you, no one drinks more, I think, in the, probably the world than New York. Because yeah. there's nobody's driving Do, home. Well, there's, no. there's cabs in the subways. Mm-hmm. Um, well, what? No, the roads are covered. and it, Everyone's drunk on the road in New York. You New York, so? everyone. Whoa. Always. One time. Because uh, there's, no, there's no traffic. There's no, like, yeah. stops. Other places, you can shut down an entire road and paralyze everybody. Right. Have these yeah. New York, is, that would that. cost millions just mm-hmm. to shut down. LA, right down at Sunset, we had the Fairfax, yeah. La Brea. And people, if especially driving home from a show at night, you'll just see people fucking swerving in and out of the fucking roads. There was one, uh, uh, and my friend was like, hey, I'm not going to say his name, but this guy got pulled over. And uh, do you know how drunk you have to be to get pulled over in New York? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And get a DUI. And we both went like, oh. Yeah, you got to be fucked up. You got to be insane. I remember going through DUI checkpoints where they stop every fifth car or whatever randomly, mm. or there's like rolling away and me say, hi, you know. And being over the limit and just being like, act normal. Yeah. Hopefully you get that four to five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, officer, like, would I be jovial? Would I be serious? Yeah. Don't look too far, straightforward. Yeah. yeah how do you Greg play? Stone has a good one where he, well, it's not for drinking, but it's just for if someone, like a cop's uh, following you. Yeah. He was like, just play the drums on your 
on your fucking. So that's why you're being weird. Wheel. Yeah, just like ah, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. That, that might work. Yeah. Yeah, and that, I, yeah, I do might... it, and they just zoop, go yeah, like, yeah, This guy's having a good time. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not. I don't really. I have one beer. I allow myself one drink and then yeah. drive. I got, honest- I got not pulled over yesterday, but I was walking Bandit, and I was just so standing there. Two, you know, two a.m. Nobody's in these quiet streets, and just kind of standing walking. She was nearby, and the cops like, "What are you doing?" Mm-hmm. And I was like, "What?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like, "What are you doing here?" I'm like, "I'm walking my dog." He's like, "All right." I'm like, uh, do I look like I'm, I guess, loitering? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, what's it to you, you cunt? Yeah, yeah. fuck off. Yeah, yeah, fuck off. It's I can Dude. be so confident when I know I don't have drugs in my pocket. Y- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I guess- <laughs> I'm only up to good. So I get away Here's the thing me. is, I guess they should be looking around to see what's going on, but at the same time, as soon as they- do it to me. <laughs> I'm yeah. Like, Fuck you. Who Fine. are you? Fuck. You're just some guy. Mm-hmm. You're just some guy. You're, You're younger just some than me. guy. Yeah. You're just some guy who got lucky that he's not in sanitation. Uh huh. You know, that's, that's all it is. My girlfriend was in Venice. She was like, it was like kind of like this neighborhood where it's like, if you go the wrong way a couple blocks, you're fucked. Mm. You know, you can only go mm. one way. And uh, and she was quiet. And there's had this fence, and this cop was standing behind the fence on this side. She walked by, and suddenly he was right there. She's like, fuck. She just got scared. She's like, what the? What are you doing here? And he was like protecting you. And she was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, fair. All right, oh, yeah. I'll allow it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what um, What was I going to say? What was I going to say? Oh, I will say Ari Shafir Jew. Ari Shafir Jew taping June 11th and 12th this weekend, you guys. Get tickets if you don't have them already, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, tickets probably still available at AriShafir.com for I don't know which show. Some are sold out and some are not. Get tickets. Come see my hour. It's a very good hour. I just saw it. It's so good. She saw it. <laughs> I saw Louisville it. Louisville liked it. You're going to love it. Brooklyn. <laughs> Louisville liked it in Derby Week. Yeah. The fucking dumb booking that was. <laughs> it was so good, though. It was good. Yeah, it yeah. was fun. We had, we went into the woods, hung yeah. out. <laughs> it was very fun. <laughs> we just kept saying how, like, everything was a Me Too moment. <laughs> she yeah. was oh, yeah. able to, like, tell her for, like, what? Ari's like <laughs> making you go to the woods with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they had this amazing hot tub. Like mm-hmm. biggest one I've ever, like legitimately the size of the studio left yeah. to right. Mm-hmm. And I would just text her. I was like, hey, bring your bathing suit. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you can't do that to an opener. <laughs> no. It was also, we went on a hike and there he got covered in ticks. He's like, make sure you check your box for ticks. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm not going to ch- check everything. I'll check your head, but check your box. <laughs> he literally said I had to ch- put my fingers on my box. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. so funny. <laughs> Harry Shafir forced me yeah. to finger myself. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't get a single fucking tick on you. I didn't. No, no, no. no I, I mean, I was covered in them. Yeah, <laughs> there's something. I felt what I thought was like a, a like a bite or maybe a twig hitting me, and I was like, mm-hmm. hold on. I was like, Caitlin, walk ahead. I got to take my pants off to like get under yeah. my pants. And then it was they were just crawling yeah. on me, like ten yeah. or twelve. You had loose pants, and then also you were the only one smoking weed. So what if they liked the smell of what weed? What if they liked weed? Huh? You smoked some of it. No, not on the hike. Not on that hike. Because I was too f- afraid we were getting lost. Fair. <laughs> Fair. But I did back at the uh, cabin. But no. I uh, I was on a hike and one of our, we all took acid, but this one guy was flying on it and it was in Ecuador and we were fucking lost. And he kept going, take your shoes off, feel the ground. I'd be like, hey, dude, we're going to die out here. <laughs> it's, it's fucking, fuck off with that fairy shit yeah, for a minute. We're stop, way off the path. Stop eating those berries, we you psycho. we got hours left to go and the sun's <laughs> over the horizon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I get on hallucinogenics. So I like I'm retarded. Like I'll just like I'll ha- I'll just like drop my phone and stuff. Like just I'll just like, I'll just be like, and I'll just walk away from things. You know Hastings? You know I'll John like, Hastings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big blonde guy. Yeah, yeah. We all took mushrooms, and at some point the next day, he he had to scurry off by himself and had his own trip. And he goes, "Hey, have you seen my phone?" And I, you know, instantly I just I was like, "Hey, man, your phone's gone." Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't tell you what happened to it. I never yeah. saw it go. But, but like, if you're asking me that, you might chew it in a lake or something. Admit, just yeah. like, it's just your friend. You your evil gone. box. Yeah, of yeah. Sins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and then you wake up the next day. You're like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. That was fun. That drives was fun. We did three patrons. Go to patreoncom Shafir. Three patrons from that week of me and three. Caitlin driving, passing these Jesus signs every day. Every day. Um. What's the right tip for the right drink? Like, is there a different amount for a cocktail and a beer? I mean, I would just do twenty percent on across the board. You worked restaurant though. Yeah, I worked restaurant. Yeah, twenty. Um, it's you, 
the standard would be a dollar a drink. A dollar a drink. Yeah. But, but I think that's not fair if you're making is, a high end drink. That's not yeah if, yeah, if I have to muddle some shit and get you an old fashioned or whatever um, yeah. mojito, it should be especially if the bar is really fucking busy. Or mm-hmm. if it's an expensive cocktail place. Mm-hmm. Like if you go into like please don't tell or whatever these places are uh-huh. and you have to pay twenty five dollars and the guy's like fucking great and nutmeg and shit, yeah, give him a few dollars. An egg yeah. t- coaxing yeah. a fucking oh. chicken to lay one. Dude, if someone's cracking yeah. it lately. Breeding yeah. an egg, yeah. breeding yeah. a chicken, <laughs> plucking it. Shit on fire <laughs> uh, but it, yeah if, if, if someone's cracking an egg you better give them a few dollars yeah, yeah. Um, but here's the problem I first tipping is so retarded I don't really t- I won't tip on like a water right water, but I, they're still I getting do, you one I will tip I on water but it's like because you got it for me there's yeah, no charge but I, also, I don't tip on to go food if I go, if I ring ahead and go, can I get a burger to go? And I show up and I, I just collect the bag. And they have like the tip line. I'm like, no, nah, it makes I'm, me feel uncomfortable. There's a reason why I, I should have just got it delivered. But at the same time, if they just hand me a bottle of bud, it's like. You've it's done just, nothing. I uh, know. It's, yeah, it, the, it's, but, yeah, even at a high end place, let's say it costs like $11 for for a Heineken or whatever. It's yeah. a, it's, you're just cracking and handing it to me. So why is that worth more to you as a tip? Than a two dollar PBR. See, so the percentage is crazy because percentage let's say, is off. Let's on say bars. you go into a dive bar. It's happy hour. It's a dollar a beer. You should still tip a dollar. You should still. But then yeah. that exactly. night, if it's ten dollars, it's still a dollar. Yeah, you just got because, me one. Just because you're your charging, trouble. just because that particular restaurant is charging more yeah. for that thing. It but also then, depends on where you are. Yeah. You know, if you're at like a dive bar, then like a dollar drink is fine. But if you're at like like a place that I know the bartender, yeah. I'll yeah. do 20%. But that's different. That's if you yeah, know the yeah. bartender. Like I'm saying, what do you expect as a bartender? Yeah. Oh, a beer, a dollar a beer. It, it's got to be yeah. a dollar per item minimum. Yeah. And then if it's a cocktail, maybe two to three. But also that dollar per minimum has been the standard for like 20 years yeah. in New York. Mm-hmm. They've True. been so, they, people have been tipping that forever since yeah. the 80s. Mm-hmm. Once it goes over $6 for the drink, that's when you're getting into under the right percentage. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. at seven, if you tip a dollar, like, damn, this is low. The percentage can fuck you, though. Mm-hmm. Because if you yeah. go up and go, give me 10, 10 Yeah, you're buying beers. rounds for everybody, and then suddenly it's like, yeah. It can fuck you as a bartender, you mean? No, uh, as a customer. I'm right. saying, like, if, I, if, I, if I'm giving you a dollar for every Budweiser you give me, um, and I'm just, so it's 10 drinks, there's $10. Whereas if I get the bill, the bill could be like $100, $100 now I have to give $20. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Bills a hundred dollars. That that could be one round for your, yeah. for your five other friends and you. It depends. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's tricky. No, no it's way. Tricky. Yeah. You should be given twenty percent. Here's one though. Here's a, this is a big debate, especially in comedy. Okay. Because the, the way the free drinks come in, and every I always argue with other people. I guess I tip way too much. For, I'm putting these fucking kids to college. But <laughs> the, college, the college waitresses. I mean, the yeah. comedy club waitresses. Yeah. So what? Well, th- this one. is my and I've always been this way. You come into my bar, right? And you work up a hundred dollar tab, and I, out of the fucking goodness of my heart, give you a fifty percent discount. Yeah, that's because about we're the friends. comedy club discount. It's a fifty percent discount, so it's fifty dollars. What I would always do is, when I tip, I pay whatever the bill would have been minus the tip, minus the tip. Right. So I save mm-hmm. myself the twenty percent. The 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 bartender gets that fifty percent discount, but I'm I'm still say so rather than paying a hundred plus twenty dollar tip. I'm paying a hundred. So they're getting a fifty dollars. They're getting a thirty dollar extra tip for giving me the discount. Yeah, and that's the, about what I do with the seller. That's how I I always tip whatever the the difference is to make the hundred percent. The bill was so if it's a thirty percent discount, I'll just go up to a hundred. Yeah, that's what I do. And then if it's a little more, like let's say it's like let's say it was cost you like I don't know forty three dollars or forty six dollars, and then it's like then it becomes or twenty three or whatever. Or so so like the tip the bill would have been forty two. And I have two twenties. I'm like, that's good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you Round. can kind of like rough it like that. But I so- do it where I uh, tip on what I had. So if my check was twenty five dollars, but it, they, I get charged twelve fifty. So you I'll tip, tip on twenty five. hundred dollars. Yeah, you tip twenty percent. You tip twenty. I tip uh, whatever twenty five would be. Oh, that would exactly. be five, and then I add a couple dollars. To yeah. It. So if it was a hundred dollar bill and they took fifty off it, you would 75. still you, you'd still give the twenty. That you would have given had it been a hundred. Yeah, dollars. exactly. Right, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. you can't lower the tip. I agree no, with that. You can't yeah. lower the tip. No, I don't go any discount. lower than that. Absolutely yeah. not. Mm-hmm. But also, it's like they say you don't tip on the tax. Oh, I yeah. hate that. Tip I, on the I tax. always tip on the tax. That's yeah, the number. The, That's yeah. tip on the tax. Tip on the bold number. Yeah. Whatever yeah. the bold number but, is. At but the end. if you don't, then it's like you also don't tip on the discount. You tip on the original number. Mm-hmm. Okay, but here's the thing: is like we go into comedy clubs, you're guaranteed that discount. If it's a different bar where they don't have to give you the discount, if you're just gonna give me the twenty percent. Anyway, yeah, and now I'm I'm at risk of getting in trouble or losing my job for giving you the discount. I might as well just charge you the regular price 
And, oh, I see, you know, I see. so yeah, I, I need to right. I need to be making more than the twenty percent to give you a discount. Otherwise, to make it worth the risk. it's not worth the risk. That's my plus. Mm. But again, this is all kind of the comedy yeah. clubs. I don't like because it's it's like they're like, oh, you can eat cheap here, like, but it's not cheap. It's actually like restaurant prices on a fucking Tuesday that I don't really want to yeah, spend yeah. forty dollars on a fucking sandwich. And then right if you now, don't tip well, this yeah. is my problem now is everyone's like, oh, you gotta look after the staff. You gotta look after the staff. It's like, well, how's that got anything to do with me being on stage? Yeah, just some chick. Like, what the fuck has she got to do with my whole life? No, I'm, I'm, well. I'm, no fuck them. <laughs> no, it's crazy. That has nothing to do with my jokes on stage. I'm going to be nice to staff anyway, but I hate this idea that it's like I got to treat some fucking dope who burnt my burger like some sort of mystical comedy. <laughs> uh, they understand what's going on. They've never been on stage. They have nothing to do with anything. You don't get tipped. Fuck them. I tip anyway, but like I don't like the idea that I have to pretend as if some fucking don't forgot my happened. fries. I'm like, oh no, that's fine. Or waited there for like a long time. I was like, who's, yeah. who's waiting up here? Yeah. Like, or somebody new with like, go, oh, you gotta who's... look after the staff. I was like, well, if you love them so much, why don't you give them a fucking living wage? Why am yeah. I the fucking one paying them? I'll do it occasional if I see the checks being dropped. That's when I'll mention it. Like, that's a good tip for everybody. Mm -hmm. Guys, tip. And then they yeah, all get yeah, a few dollars yeah, extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always do that. I'll big them up on stage. Big them up. I just don't want to go. I don't want to go into a club and then be like, "You got to treat our staff very nice." And it's like, "What's that got to do with anything?" Yeah, I'm I just, doing my job. I'll do it anyway. I get it. I get it. It is, and it's like, how about I do it because I want to do it? Like David Tell brings in candy because he wants to. Yeah, not because it's like, <laughs> what a fucking creep move, huh? When yeah, you think about that's crazy. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although I did eat he a lot of Hershey kiss kisses lot last of, night. Yeah. candies. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, well, I think is I'm doing it anyway. I'm yeah. just doing it anyway. But I don't think my stage time in my life should depend on just some 21-year-old. No, 21 it should be because like, hey, this is all our family. It's kind of like when you get off work and then you still drink at your own bar, of course you're going to be tipping heavy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. same thing. It's like we're all working Ooh, here together. That's an, well, yeah, it depends. I think that's I, it. I've, I've always worked at places where you tip each other, but I know other bars where the bartenders never tip each other. Because like, don't, don't keep it. It's we're like all working if you here. stay here after work, just take the drinks for free. Don't tip me. Enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I like that. Don't tip each other. That's, that's what I want to do good. for Christmas presents. Don't give me anything. I won't get you anything. Gray. Ugh. Now I got to go shopping for fucking 27 people in my life. I, how about my gift is don't give me anything. Don't bother me. What do you What do you get all your relatives? Oh, you got to go to the goddamn Union Square fucking the, stupid the, fucking market. The juice store? What are you getting each other? Flip, you, flip phones? Discount cards. Discount cards? Yeah. Oh. Mostly discount cards. Just like a CVS, $20 CVS card? Yeah. Eviction notices. Because <laughs> they're going to use them. You know, An so eviction can... whip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can start whipping our tenants. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the no presents thing? Yeah. It the seems no like... Well, Chris, Steve and I don't do Christmas presents. It's mm. cliche. It's yeah. like, this is not, you're not Christians. Mm -mm. So like, what are you even doing? How about give yeah. do presents randomly when you feel like it? Yeah, we more do, we go bigger on our birthdays. And then uh, we don't even do Valentine's Day. We'll go out to dinner another time. It's dumb. But yeah, it's dumb. No Christmas. It's and but you still feel a little obligated, right? Or are you free of it? Uh, so I'm free of it with Steve. I'm free of it. Yeah. And does yeah. he feel like okay? We're not doing that, but uh, I should I should also get well, you we, a flower. We got um, Christmas presents for each other this year because we both got COVID and we had to stay home. That's nice. Present. Yeah. So we got like one thing for someone to open. <laughs> What'd you get him? Uh, Antibodies. I got him <laughs> <laughs> a home test. Yeah, uh, one of those Abbott home tests. Yeah, yeah, PCR. Yeah. <laughs> I got you a too. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got him earbuds or something like that. And then cool. he got me a record. But you guys are also in this sort of young, starving artist situation where it's very quickly all this idea of buying each other shit goes out the window. works 50 fucking one weeks a year on the yeah. road. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she ain't starving anymore. Yeah. No, but I do have student loans. Oh, so. right, right, right. There you go. Oh, yeah. Grad school student loans. Yeah. Fuck. Such a waste of time. But here we go. <laughs> I feel great. Mm -hmm. Um, what else are we gonna say? Oh, do you prefer this? A cash tip, like oh, charge, yeah. charge. Let's say it's a hundred, but then here's twenty in cash. Mm, or would you rather better. it on the thing? No, oh, why always does it matter. Cash always cash. Why? Why does it matter? They don't tax them. You don't have to declare the cash. Mm -hmm. Go straight into your money. Straight into and your pocket. So, but don't they go at some point? Like we assume you're getting a certain. They percentage. do, but it. There's a survey came out a while ago that where they were talking about like New York. Um, waiters or waitresses or whatever and it was like people are much more likely to tip on card than they are with cash yeah this it's what already the right there no but this is what the survey came out as it was like no you idiots you're asking waiters what people tip on cash and they're telling you that they don't tip but they do tip we're just not declaring it yeah 
So they, these guys, uh, these guys, asking you on, on the record, they're like mm -hmm. using a fucking honor system. It's like, did yeah. you get any cash tips last night? And you go, no, really stingy crowd. Yeah. <laughs> no, what do you ask? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We would pull all of our tips. Yeah. Uh, and so we would have to give all of our tips to our manager. Then he would distribute them, whatever the payout was. Yeah. yeah. But we declared none of. Them. I think they at. At, they got in trouble after two years, and so they had to declare half of them. Or like ten percent, yeah. they'll bill you yeah, on ten percent. Like, like we that. assume you're making some. There's a yeah. there's a minimum you got to do to avoid getting audited. Yeah, too, something like that. Right. With certain that. things, like you got to say mm -hmm. at least a certain percentage. But also, it, like the people, some people will tip on the card. So it's like if let's say you have to pay ten percent, and there's two two customers, and one pays twenty on a card, one pays twenty on on uh, on cash. You, the twenty on the card is like that's my ten percent for both. Because what? you space it out over both of them. So, like, if you're, if the government's assuming at least 10%. Oh, yeah. So, it's like, oh, so, so the yeah. second guy, like, yeah, tip me cash, man. I've already covered the fucking percentage I gotta give the government. Yeah. I always try and tip cash. Even when we pay in card, I'm it's always nice. tipping cash. I can tip more on a card, though, than I can in cash. Because it's just writing out with a pen that I already have out. I'd rather have less. Really? In cash, then and, it, and then it's your take home because you're Finished leaving it. with it in your pocket rather than yeah. waiting for right. your check. Mm -hmm. Oh, how good is that feeling of leaving with a fucking yeah. wad? It's oh, the best. oh, it's the best. So, all my jobs are just cash jobs, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's com comedy, they just pay you. Uh, it's just like you on a Friday or Saturday, yeah, you come home with like five hundred dollars. Yeah, you, know, you don't even count it. Yeah, yeah. You're, and you're it just piles up. Yeah. yeah, you feel like a millionaire. It's awesome. It's uh, it's sticker money. <laughs> sticker money. Yeah. Sticker money, baby. That's right. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's sell stickers. I sell stickers and then I just get a wad of cash and I'm oh, always nice. just like, I can't believe I almost didn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Stickers is the way to go. Yeah. Give whatever you want. Not you do a donation to... thing for the yeah. stickers? Yeah, yeah. yeah not hard to fucking. Donation is better than the price because they feel obligated to give you a lot. I should yeah. do stickers. I should do stick. I hate you waiting should. in line for like t shirts and having somebody like, Ah, uh, dude, I think the X Files mm. are in there. Yeah, it's a better, cooler thing for the audience, but for T-shirts, but the amount of time, really, they just most people just want a picture, mm -hmm. so they just feel obligated to get a shirt. A lot of they just want to buy something. They, they want to yeah. buy. They, they just want to buy anything to help support you. So it doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. Sell them a fucking a blank CD. Yeah, they're, not, they're never even gonna <laughs> open it. Like, I got one of those outside. The, it's a uh, pink dot near on Sunset. This guy woos and, and cat eyes with a Z. <laughs> they would sell their shit all the time. Yeah, and they were like, "Hey, you like hip hop?" And I was like, "No." Nah. Not actually, no, I don't. That's not my yeah. genre. I'm more of like a alt rock. And they're like, "Come on, man, give it a chance." I'm like, "Oh, it's okay. Uh, all right, why?" They're like, just listen to this. I'm like, "Cool, like five dollars, you want it?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> and then eventually, I kept telling him no after a while, and then it hit me. I'm like, "Be like, because I live right on that block." And I was like, "Yeah, I already got that woos, man. Woos, it's great." And he goes, "You got that cat eyes?" <laughs> Somebody else popped up. I'm like, Ugh. I bought one. It was just a blank CD. It didn't even burn it. Uh. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's just, just the, it's the it. hustle, that's baby. So shitty. Oh, just it's burn a, it, though. But I, yeah. I've talked to those guys too in New York, and you talk to them, they still tell you, they won't, they'll never admit that it's just a hustle. They'll always mm -hmm. say, "No, I'm like trying to break grow, in here. I'm trying to do, you, make my career out of it." You like hip hop. <laughs> and they have all these things like, yo, nice fucking Birkenstocks. And they have oh, yeah. all these great ways to get you in. They have a great yeah. way of stopping people, yeah. And mm -hmm. that's why everyone in New York is mean. So people come here from fucking Belgium and, yeah. and, and they see somebody go, oh, hey, nice pants, fuck off. Yeah. And they walk, they're like, Jesus, <laughs> what is this place? And you're like, yeah. everyone's taking advantage. No one would give you a compliment. Yeah. We were no. broken. Like, I'll do a head down, like, nice shirt, and just keep walking if I really do think somebody has a nice shirt on. Mm -hmm. But oh, yeah? it's, it's hard. You know, you're crossing a, a, a nonverbal line. I know. A I'm like, written line. I'm like that driving. I'm like, nice tits. And just keep going. Just no, going. You <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, you don't. Okay. No, you don't. Outside, outside of high school. Yeah. Me, me and Ari. <laughs> now, I'm never going to be global again. I don't believe you None for of you did second. anything. You never were a bartender. Did, um, did uh, what was I going to say? Did you ever see anybody fucking at work? Or did you guys ever fuck at work? I Meet never, somebody, go to the bathroom. I know a couple that did. Went to the bathroom or under Went the table? Went to the table? bathroom. And mm. then one time in the office, a guy, uh, the head chef, had a nice time in wow. the office. With a customer? No, with a... Another waitress. It was the staff party. The staff parties would get wild. Ooh. Like insane. Tell me if I'm wrong about this. Jason Rouse explained this to me once. We did some bar show in like Hamilton, Ontario, and it was like early on comedy. And he was like, oh, every girl here is just like wild. Like they fuck. Mm -hmm. I was like, how do you know that? He goes, because... The, the manager is the generic cokehead. And so he's doing the hiring. Mm -hmm. So he's going to err on the side of who looks like someone I might be able to fuck down the road. Wow. And so everyone they hire, even if that manager got <clears throat> fired, 
Mm-hmm. The new manager is coming into a place of, well, the other guy already curated this mm-hmm. for yeah. tatted up smokers. Yeah. You know? And so mm. it's all just degenerates. That's who they're hiring. It's nobody's like, oh, I'm in medical school. S- S- yeah. Slutty and So at, a, at, a, at one of those parties, everyone's fucking each other all the time mm-hmm. and getting into bitter fights and stuff. Great. Yeah. Did they're you guys so find close. that or no? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, the the parties were always wild, but we were always getting drunk after shift anyway. So then it was like, oh, we shut down the the bar. Now it's just us. This is nuts. And we mm. would do it like twice a year. It was Super Bowl Sunday. We would shut down and then just go crazy. Go crazy. Because we were going to be dead anyway. So it's like, let's. <sighs> wow. We'd always go to Patty's at the old stand. And that's when the staff and the comics would just start fucking. And the staff and the staff. Mm-hmm. Everyone was just, just like fucking on. everyone. Yeah, everyone was everywhere. Everybody. Everybody. It was it's also right. young New any, York. Any groups though, even if it's so like I know when you're boozed up, everyone's fucking. Yeah, mm-hmm. but and all these like sober LARPing crowds where they dress up as bunny rabbits and <laughs> cast spells <laughs> on each other. Aren't they all banging each other? Right. That's what yeah, I'm told. They're fucking, yeah, they're fucking for just sure. Harry Potter is fucking Walk the to shit me out in a of a tightrope, a, a foot off the ground, and then you can put it in. Yeah, but everyone's fucking it. But I. I've fucked a lot in bars over the years. In so, the bars? Yeah. On oh. the on the bar, in the bathroom. On the bar? Yeah. That's wild. Loads of After times. After hours. After hours when it's locked. No, no, I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Sir. Yeah. Can we get another round? Like, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spanking some chick. I mean, um, I've dated a lot of people from the bar. Like, I've dated yeah. four line cooks. That's, wow. Uh, you got, oh, yeah. yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the line cooks are the best. You're always going. They're so fun. Because they're... Fucking, they're the party animals. Mexicans? They're a good time. Why? Yeah, because they're always doing drugs. They're always they're drinking. They're all on coke, right? They're all, yeah, it's fucking wild. Over the chefs? The chefs, chefs are a little bit more serious. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, line I know the line cooks. Are just taking orders are... and fill, filling it? What, what do the line cooks do? They just like, chef, are... give me the recipe. Cool, now I'll just do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then I've, I, one sous chef, one sous chef, three line cooks. What's a sous chef? Sous chef is the assistant to the. Uh, head chef. So there's got to be a sous chef on duty at all times. Either the sous chef or the head chef. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, buddy. It's fucking on a mm. bar. Who was that? Staff? Um, did I ever fuck staff? That was a customer? A, that was a customer. Jesus that Christ. Yeah. Wow. I've had, I've Where had, was this? Woodside? Uh, East Village. No, not Woodside. I did get a hand job or a blow job. <laughs> I got a couple of hand jobs in Woodside. Wow. I fucked in the bathroom loads of times. It's that accent, man. You must cash it, in and fucking. You know, you know what it is? It's 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 the four o'clock stragglers where it's tough to say no to them. Because here's the thing: is if I could quit my shift, me like in the moment, I would have just got so much good young pussy. Like if it was like, like let's it's twelve thirty, they're flirting the fuck out of you, and they're like, "Come on, let's do something." But it's like I'm here till four. And, yeah, like, oh, and then I got another hour at 30. Yes, yeah, so yeah. it's like, you don't come back at five. So yeah. it's like, the, it, the the opportunity never happens. But there are a couple of broads in their 30s that would wait till four. <laughs> How many girls were like, okay, I'll come back at 3.30. Nah, and, then they, and they just wouldn't come back. Would oh, say they would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the time. And you're just yeah. waiting, looking down the yeah. street. <laughs> no, you, you learn early on, I think, that you go, oh, I'm just going to be fucking all the time. It's like, you never have a chance. Yeah. But in the bathroom, loads of times. there was a, I broke, That's a New York thing, I, fucking in the bathroom. Yeah, I, <laughs> I broke the, the sink in my bathroom. One in in the bathroom in the the bar on Woodside, if I'm sitting B- banging, girl on it. banging some girl over, and then the fucking thing ripped off the side of the thing, and oh. then it was it, then it became this thing where they could never really fix it, so every week it would just fall off. The, <laughs> it's a replaster. The and wall then my boss was always like, "You fucking piece of shit," and I go, "That wasn't me," and he was like, "I fucking know it was you." <laughs> I don't know how he knew it. No one should have known. <laughs> but, uh, Did you fix it? I, yeah. All you do is pick it up and hook it back on the thing, but it just kept falling off. <laughs> it's just uh, one of these things. <laughs> yeah, I banged loads of people. I banged one chick. I brought her back to the bar from a different bar after I'd finished working. <laughs> and be like, hey, I know where you can go where. Yeah, everybody I know calls where you can go raw your dog you before you to- go back to New Zealand. <laughs> 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 we used to do that. We would go to a bar with the head chef at an old restaurant. Uh, not the one that I talk about mostly. But uh, we would go and then we would he, he would be like, this is too expensive. And then we'd just go back to... The old, which is now out of business. We would go back, and he would just pour up bottles of wow. wine for everybody. Yeah, that's I, great. I've I've had some bad things. I've done some bad stuff over the years. Like with bars, it was like they, they, we were all at a different bar, and it closed at like five a.m. And I have the th- keys, so I'd go pull up at like in an Uber, and I'd run in and grab like bottles of like Jägermeister and shit, and bring it to a party. I just raid the fucking fridge. Like, Jesus. Listen, listen. Oh, really? Yeah, I just raid it. And But again, I was I was so young. <laughs> I, was 20, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was 25. Yeah. That's um, funny. Or, yeah, getting fucking wasted. Up yeah. The, 
There's another one. Yeah. I had a girl come in at, I was working the North Hill service desk, University of Maryland, where we give out packages and phone numbers. And if you locked your keys out, we had spare keys. Um, and some girl came in at like 1.30 a.m. I think, no, I think my shift was 12 to 3. So it was probably right at 2. She came in and she was like, and she was like, is it still recording? Yes. Yeah, shit. Did I, okay, whose is this? Oh, uh, that's me? Can you I don't know. hear me? See me? Talk? No, it's yours. Talk. Test, test, test. One, two, one, two, one, two. Hello. Perfect. Hello. We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> so, so she started, Um, she started, she goes, hey, do you have Daniel Johnson's number? I don't know the names. And I was like, uh, yeah, here it is. And she's like, fuck, Daniel, where are you? I want to come over. And then she was like, sat there for a minute. And then she was like, do you have John Smith's number? <laughs> I was like, yeah. And she called like, fuck, mm. come on. And then she just, she got like three or four numbers. And then nobody was home. And then she was like, what's your name? I'm like, Ari. And she's like, when do you get off? I'm like, like an hour from now. And she's like, <sighs> and then eventually she just left. <laughs> and I, I was like, God damn it. Uh, right now, if that's what you need me to do. I'll yeah. Like I mean, why couldn't that have been 258? Yeah. <laughs> And I can I ask then, as a female bartender, uh -huh. yes. you probably had a lot of guys. Sorry <laughs> for you. This is a good question. Yeah. yeah, you probably had a lot of guys that would come in and just be like, you know, they're almost like the, the, the stalker. And every time you see him, you go, "Fuck," you know. I yeah. there was, I would get flirty guys, uh -huh. but yeah. who knew me from the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I I'm also very oblivious to men hitting on me. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, it would usually be like an older daddy who okay. would be like, hello. And I'd be like, and I'd just shut it down immediately. What? How, how would you do it? I, I can be very like rude a little okay. bit. Not rude, but just Fuck like <laughs> pretty much and be like, yeah, I just go to this thing with my boyfriend all the time. Yeah. Or That's I'll have one of the line cooks boyfriend. come over and be like, hi, <laughs> you know, just yeah. very. You wouldn't play it up because I think that's a great way to get the tip. A lot of girls no. do that. I hate it. A lot it. of girls will go like, so what else do you need? Yeah. You know, put your oh, hand on shoulder. No. You your hand, Ari, right. you're good at it. You're oh, my it. goodness, Ari. <laughs> oh, my God. Get those yum yums out. There. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Absolutely. never would. I couldn't do it. I, I, I'm always just like, ugh, you know. <laughs> there is yeah. a bit of whoring that's going on in the Dude, waitressing world. It, it's and just, the bartending it's, world it's, where it's, it's like the cleavage shirts. I mean, I've talked to waitresses. I work around them so much. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I get better tips if I show these. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I would get better tips if I wore a leotard, like a tight fitting leotard. Really? Because yeah. I don't I do not do the cleavage thing, but I do like the high waisted. Ooh, yeah, wow. Looking good. Yeah. I remember my friend Jim Painter once said that we were at a waitress, some bar and, and um, watching a game or something uh, near this comedy store. And she was cute, you know? And we're, we're like, we should tip her, you know? Because she was, she was we were young and it was like, just cool to be around her. She was flirty. And then my friend was like, oh, right. So she can like treat her boyfriend to a nice meal. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah, yeah, why? Yeah. That's fair. The, the, the girls at the stand. Yeah. If you ever walk in and they're all just dressed up great, you go, is Chappelle doing a show later? They go, yeah. They're, they're hoping to be well, the next Mrs. I don't know. I don't know what their plan is. It's, I'm, assuming it's, I'm assuming it's the security. But and then also the, the the clientele because the tickets are two hundred dollars. Mm. Oh, they're, they're dressed, dressed up like, for that. Fuck it, they're dressed as good as they could possibly. Yeah. Be. Whereas then on a regular nights they just come in. I remember we had a them. comic when I was starting and I was like wide eyed about comedy and everything and this older comic, uh, it was probably like thirty five but he was like developed and, and and he goes all you fucking waitresses and they're all friends you know all you fucking waitresses just want to be the next Mrs. Carey. And uh, and someone's like Drew Carey or Jim Carey, and he goes, "You don't even care." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Damn, what is this world?" Yeah. That is a uh, almost like winning the lottery. You're like, I'm a waitress. Some celebrity comes in, looks me up, brings me to Malibu. Yep. You know, my life is set. Yep, that's awesome. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. it sounds awful. But you, you sh <laughs> if you want to make money, and all you got to do is show your tits a little bit, I get it. Yeah, you'll, it's not really also, whoring. I've that's also I, I've known. At the end of the month is when you you'll see waitresses are dressed most slutty. Wow. When rent is due, that's when you, <laughs> that's when you'll see them trying to earn that money. I promise you. Wow. The, the fucking Friday night before a fucking thing, the, the waitresses are absolutely. Do you ever play up your accent to get? Like, I've, tried, I've done it to try to get pussy, but not really. No. To pussy. <laughs> no, yeah, my no, friend from Jamaica did that. He'd be like, he, when he worked at like a resort in Jamaica, <laughs> and he would like, he's like, I don't talk that way. It's a slight accent, but I would go illegible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then there's like 30 year olds who wanted to have their Jamaican adventure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that's God. it. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That's mm -hmm. the dream. Mm -hmm. The dream would be if I was bartending, 
if I was, wasn't doing comedy, I would have done something like I probably would have went to Arizona and tried to bartend at like Arizona State, one of those party bars, mm-hmm. get all these college. Or you go to a vacation place where you stay there, but the people are only visiting for a week. Oh, so yeah, it's yeah. just a fucking every different every week you got a different girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. That, that's oh right or Key uh, West or something it. yeah that's, I had a friend who did uh, St. Thomas he would go down oh, to St. Thomas for three months and bartend at this bar yeah. and just make a shit ton and of money just, it's mostly just frozen drinks mm-hmm. and yeah then, you don't and, have to do anything and tourists love fucking too because it's like it, yeah it's, again, it's, like, it's this they're one, on vacation it's on it doesn't vacation. count and also they're not gonna play any games because they go I'm not gonna marry this yeah, guy you're, not, yeah, you're yeah. not gonna like have to date me three times yeah. Yeah. it's happening tonight and it's adventurous mm-hmm. I get it it's adventurous yeah and yeah Exactly. That's the trick. <laughs> Comedy got in the way of my pussy oh, dreams. Oh, dude. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Did you ever fuck a, 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 a customer? Uh, yes. But yeah. <laughs> not, well, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Nice. He was um, He was also the uh, neighborhood Coke dealer. <laughs> oh. And uh, I broke up with my boyfriend and we had always been flirty. Right. You know, mm. he was a regular at the bar. He was always flirty. And then we hooked up, and it was the worst sex I'd ever had in my life. Oh, and I was like, I'm never home. doing that again. <laughs> was this, what was so bad about it? It was... Uh, Awkward? We just talked about it as long as it lasted. Oh, oh really? Probably damn, half that time. Not worth it. Not, not worth, worth it. it. And you're like, damn it, that's another number. Mm-hmm. Couldn't go twice. For that. No, he, he was just like, oh. <laughs> it was just like... Gets awkward. I've been that guy. Yeah. I don't, it's, all right. it's like, ugh. It was it's so like bad. pounding it. <laughs> yeah, it was so bad. I'm acting even sadder to make up for it. This is in the way. <laughs> What's really funny is I talked to my friend uh, who I, I was like, did you ever hook up with uh, this guy? And she was like, ugh, yeah. From getting leaving the bar and getting to my place and him living it lasted five minutes wow Wow. yeah i was like oh so this is his thing and she's like yeah and we also worked at the same restaurant together (laughs) interesting so he was just going through the restaurant damn yeah there is i love that that um not it's like down the line or one in the one in the fucking chamber man or woman that you have like you're flirting but like mm-hmm. no no I, i've got a boyfriend but yeah. like you know as soon as you break up like we're 60 percent in already. yeah <laughs> this yeah. is like already being done yeah the one you tell her not to worry about huh? yeah <laughs> yeah like, I'm not gonna cheat, was right but, but don't say like let's take a break and then come back two days later because yeah. it's already happened yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see what else do you guys have jukeboxes at your fucking bars yeah. was there no. any, was there yeah. any um What's the word? Juke, Ma- juke whores? What? <laughs> a little juke whore would come in and hog the jukebox? No, people- was it, yeah, was there any like, what, what's the word? What's the word? What's like right way to act? Any etiquette. Etiquette. Oh, yeah. I see, I see. Juke etiquette? Juke uh, etiquette. Oh, I thought you were saying Jew. Yeah, for sure. Oh. I did too. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Juke. Yeah. Don't forget to get tickets right now to my special, rshapiro.com. It's oh, a very good plugging. hour. <laughs> yeah. Wait, yeah, was there Juke etiquette? Yeah, I I think the goal is to, you don't want to hog it too much. Don't want to hog it, mm-hmm. and also you gotta have some understanding of where you are. Mm-hmm. Like you can't just be putting on. So because some people come into a bar and then they'll put on like, you know, real slow, depressing, fucking. Put on the cure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it will ruin the vibe. Everyone's dancing, having fun. The cure. Yeah. Yeah. Or they'll play heavy metal like Slipknot yeah, or something. Yeah, big J music. Like, come and then, on. Yeah, but luckily, if you're nowadays, you'll just have a. Button. So I would just, oh, I'll just that's skip nice. it and go. Sorry, that your song sucks. You can have your dollar back. Fuck you. You can make fun of it. You do have a power as a bartender. Well, you can turn you it off. You're the boss. Yeah. I, sometimes I've just turned off the jukebox because it's like the vibe of the whole bar is more important than this guy giving this machine money. Mm-hmm. A dollar for five songs. It doesn't, no it way. doesn't help me you, at all. You don't yeah. get twenty minutes. So I on just this. You put on your music on Spotify so you can curate the fucking. Yeah. Dude, that I think is the most important part of the vibe of a bar is the playlist. Yes. Yeah. More than the fucking the looks of it, whatever. Oh, a, a yeah. cool playlist, like it just you feel right. It brings a certain type mm-hmm. of person in, and I'm not into every playlist, and not everybody's into my playlist. But yeah, yeah, we had a selected. We had like seventeen that we were able to pick from. But the playlist, playlist, oh, wow. and uh, the owner would come in and change it if we added something to it. It'd be oh, like nope, yeah. nope, wow. nope. And so we yeah. had this like. I, I've always had battles with owners too because like people my age or at least at the time in your 20s mm-hmm. we're listening to like i don't know even if it was just eminem or something but he'd come in he's in his 60s like oh no 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 and he'd put on like elvis or something like yeah. for you man who do you want here yeah, yeah. it's like the, the people here are busy and he's yeah. like no but then my friends won't come in it's like yeah, i know but i don't give a fuck about your friends yeah, <laughs> yeah you want to fail as a business 
Yeah. I do like when there's a bartender was like, hey, my night is Tuesday night. It's going to be fucking 80s hip hop night. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you're like, oh, I always know that bar on Tuesdays. Samantha works and it'll be fun. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah I've always fucking hated bar owners, too. Fuck oh, them. they're they're, 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 they're scum. They think they're fucking they're, scum. Go, they're Gordon Gecko because they <laughs> they have a they, it, your clients are addicted. It's the easiest thing in the world to have a successful bar. It, it's they're addicted to beer. Ninety five percent of the sales are from people who are addicted. Right, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and you pay fuck all. It's like a dollar. It's like it, yeah. you pay nothing. You pay on nothing. The markup you pay, is the so... markup is huge. Yeah, you yeah. don't pay your staff. They get tipped. It's the easiest job in the world. All you got to do is set it up and make sure that people f- will want to go. Mm-hmm. Four so, drinks, four drinks of a vodka drink is the equivalent of that bottle. Yeah, and mm-hmm. so it's like it's, huge, it's so yeah. easy, and they don't pay anyone, but they act as if they this that, and the other, and also then they'll treat their staff like shit, but they're not even paying the staff. If that and a bartender is like freelance. Mm-hmm. I'm given the opportunity to earn money from mm-hmm. the c- customers. You're allowing me the, the time. You're, re- you're renting a I'm fucking. Re- it's like a I'm booth. renting a space yeah. at a, a flea market type of thing. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually I'm not being paid by them at all. So when they come in then in New York and they're like mop the floors, you go that has nothing to fucking do with me. Mm-hmm. You need to hire a fucking cleaner. Yeah, but the the, the right. whole it, the whole system's rigged so that these cons can just make all this money. Yeah, fuck them. It's a little different with restaurants just because it's so food oriented. Yeah. yeah, but. I used to work for one restaurant that was just, he would take advantage so much. What do you mean? That, like he would, um, he would make us stay late. He would make us do deep cleaning yeah. shit. Fuck this. We'd I'm have to off. Come I'm early. done, dude. Yeah. I don't want to be here to begin with. We'd have to get rags and just literally like scrub down everything. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, it, it's t- tough because I had a job that was like probably 2000 a week I was mm-hmm. earning. So wow. I'm making big money. Damn. Yeah. I'm making big money. When you're alcoholics in Woodside paying cash, oof. You're mm-hmm. and no tips, right? No, no You're tax on that. It. So that two thousand a week was like yeah. was like twenty eight hundred. Yeah, I, I think my, I don't know what yours. My biggest payday was two thousand one night. Once. What I one made, night? One night I made two grand. What'd we never made that much. I think the most I made was like eight hundred. Yeah, but it's because it's restaurant. You have to tip out your bar back. You I've have had to tip lo- yeah. out. I've also had lots of nights too. where I earned sixty dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, That's where happened you're just to sitting me too. There on your phone, someone opens the door, sees there's no one in there, and then we'll close. And you're like, no, no, I feel bad you, when I walk even, in, you, nobody's there. I even go, yeah. don't even bother. Just fuck off. I'd rather have no customers than one customer. Yeah, and close early. I'd rather do that. No customers. You're just sitting there. I'm just sitting there on on your phone just watching or, or you what's nice is you turn the music off you put on like some TV mm-hmm. and then a customer comes in and you go Ugh. you have to turn it off yeah, yeah, put on yeah. some music you go hey where yeah. you from, buddy <laughs> uh, make it feel yeah. welcome so happy you're here do you ever get people talking to you not hitting on you but just talking to you that you just don't want to talk to <sighs> yes oh. and they're sharing it's the worst there's a, there's a uh-huh. huge part of bartending that is you just listen to their horse shit mm-hmm. they'll just come over and be t- telling you a tale and you say yeah. Jesus there was one guy who would talk like this and so I would have to come in and be like what was that and he'd yeah. be like dip it, dip it, dip it, dip it. and uh-huh. I was like this is uh-huh. very loud in here and yeah. everything's covered in tile you need huh. to speak yeah. up buddy but yeah. he's like dip it, dip it, dip it. <laughs> well, like, I'd have people oh. that would just start talking and it's going nowhere and they're like mm-hmm. oh did I ever tell you about that time I was in um, Buffalo upstate New York it was uh, 2006. No, actually, it was Sy- Syracuse. <laughs> and it was 2004. Well, I think the Red Sox were in the World Series. So it was 2003, maybe. And I was like, shut the fuck uh, up. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares about that part? Up. Yeah. It's wild. Who and cares about that part? Yeah. The worst are the customers who sit there and they think they're helping, but they're just being in the way. Like yeah. You know, like they're they're like, oh, I'm your friend. You get to me whenever you need. And then you'll come over and they'll be like, can I get some ketchup? And I'm like, oh, sure. And they come back and they're like, sorry. how about some mustard? I'm sorry, I forgot. And then you come back and they're like, do you have hot sauce? And you're just like, just tell it all that's, at once. That's the thing. Of, uh, it's, it depends. If it, the bar's really busy, you can also be more of a cunt to customers because the bar themselves understand mm-hmm. each cost. But if like, let's say someone comes up, it's like, can, can I get like two Bacardi and Cokes? And you go, all right, whatever, you go get it. And you come back and go, actually, and uh, give me whatever IPA you have and go get it. And then you come back and like, and a vodka soda. And I go, fuck you. What else? Fuck you. It's, yeah. it's, it's one order. Yeah. This is, I can't, I'm not be- jumping up and down right now. Yeah. And the worst is like, are you going to remember this? And it's just like, I've been here for eight years. Yeah. Yeah. I will remember, I remember this. I remember four <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah. people walk, and that's a crazy thing where bartenders will say, I'll remember their drink. I haven't seen, I've met this guy once. He'll mm-hmm. come in two years later and I'll go, oh, fucking tequila with an orange slice. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing yeah. for a drunk to remember that too. It's yeah. not just yeah. like, whatever. I did yeah. it in the bar. I just tipped well one night at this bar. Yeah. And then I came in like two months later and she, she just like, made the same drink it was like this one's on me you know you're cool yeah. i'm like what yeah it's crazy but the it's, only problem is though do you ever go in though 
you might have been drinking whatever Guinness that night, but now you're like, oh, I'm in the mood for that seltzer today, yeah. and then they make you. I the gotta Guinness. take it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened once. We have found our bar in. <laughs> This is how sad I am. I was like, if we're going to move to Astoria, we have to be near a watering hole. You know, yeah, I need to be near a place, a place that I like. Neighborhood bar. Sure. Yeah. And so we found one. And so we go. And then uh, like th- on like the third time we were then the bartender remembered us. And he was like, Negroni and cider. And Steve was like, oh, my God. <laughs> ah, he felt like a celebrity. I was like, yeah, yeah we tip well. And yeah, we, we're we have a problem. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not a cool thing. Yeah. He was like, yeah. this is, we got to come back here. And I was yeah. like, honey, this was the plan the whole time. <laughs> yeah, this was why. Yeah, now you get it, Steve. Yeah, yeah, I get a, a, a padrone, and it's people are like, because I don't remember, it, so I have to tell them what it is. They're like, what is this? And they tell them, it's like it's a, it's like a Godfather. It's, it's not everybody has it, and they're like, let me look it up, and they do, and then then that's so yeah. in their minds. They're like, mm-hmm. you're the Godfather guy. Yeah, like, yeah. It's nice walking in and just, and the regulars, you know, you just give you a little the nod. Yeah, and then they just do the thing. Especially if you drink mm-hmm. the same thing always. Yeah, they're just yeah. like, sure, I got you. Yeah, Patty's is always. They'd always make room for you. Yeah. It's Patty's, nice to have a neighborhood bar Patty's where they Patty's just know awesome. you. Yeah. They Patty's still remember you after, co- like, two, three years later. How you been? How was your yeah. co- Like They're just like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a good, I was never that great. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I was never that great. God, I'm, I I'm wish not, you died right there. Uh, that would be, <laughs> be great. That'd be <laughs> awesome. Put it behind the yeah. Patreon. Yeah. yeah. Just like, just <laughs> head over to patreon.com slash ours you feel right now to find out what happened. Just call it. Yeah, call go offline for a few days. I'm a good fast bartender, but I was never, like, the most personable like you know mm. people don't love me by yeah because i just it's just not i can't do it yeah but i've worked with people who that's their whole thing do i don't know if you remember the, the new zealand bartender at paddy's um the new zealand you might have met him okay I, mean, I worked with him when he had a bar back in the day oh but he people would come into me and go like um is so and so here it's like oh, i met him fucking five years ago i was here in town one night and i met him and they were like how do you remember that it was like yeah, oh, yeah i just he, he just stays with them whereas i'd meet people 10 times they're like who are you damn yeah, yeah. not knowing face it's weird because you're looking right at them but you just don't look at them yeah mm-hmm. yeah what's the etiquette for when you are in the weeds they still call it that mm-hmm. yeah when you're swamped and it's like can you like like wave to you guys or is it like hey don't wave i see you fucking standing there I don't you know, know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. Like, I don't know. It depends. Every situation is different. If I'm in the weeds, I'll just keep my head down and you can wave all you want and it's not going to happen. Busy. I'm yeah. doing stuff. Um, but, or I'll just give a little like that. I, get, you know? I got you in a second. Yeah, no, yeah, look. yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, because the place I worked at, it was like high end cocktails. So everything had like five, six steps in it. Yeah. And so it's just like, I got to hammer out these guys real so quick. I'm working on yeah. something. And what I also I- had to do the sidebar, you know, I had to do the tickets mm. for the tables. So oh. you would be, Thursdays were the worst because it was one bartender, but it was busy like a Friday night. You would make a shit ton of money, but you were literally yeah. doing like these Non-stop. six step con- cocktails and then happy hour we had $1 oysters. And so it was just like putting in these oysters and then getting all their drinks in before 6.30 and it was just, yeah. it was chaos. Oh, before happy hour ended? Before happy hour ended. Damn. Yeah. You get, you get good at it. It's yes, almost you get good at it. It's almost impre- impressive the mm-hmm. how fast because you can remember everyone's drinks, you're constantly going like this, you're blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And I always found bartending or waiting tables, it's easier the busiest it is almost because what? it's like you're constantly running around. Yeah. Do you need water? Do you need water? If it's yeah. dead... I might check up on you every two minutes, whereas mm-hmm. I'm running around constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My system would be the typewriter thing. That's what they told me. It was like, you start on the left, you go across to whatever your section is ends at the bar. And then you go all the way back to the beginning, and then you just go across. To make sure everybody's hit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then if I noticed someone I didn't like, I could skip them. Or if someone I knew, I'd fucking... I'd, go right at yeah. them. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, we would do the typewriter. Then if people were late waiting, you they would just be like people were sitting at the bar and then you'd, they'd be like two or three deep and they would just be the ones that were like, excuse me, yeah. I'm standing. Yeah, Ugh. because it's also like everyone's Ugh. blocking the bar by sitting there mm-hmm. and you're like, how do I get to the bartender? How do I mm-hmm. not reach over somebody you, and be like, hey, hey. You can you can skip lines, especially if you're watching though, because if I go up and then that girl who's been waiting for 10 minutes is talking to her friend and someone behind them is looking at me, I'm not waiting mm-hmm. for them to half around. a second for them. I just go straight up. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, the eye contact look where you're just like, oh yeah, yeah. They wait until they look at you and it's like, mm-hmm. you're just like, it's yeah, all eye away. contact. All eye contact. And that's when you can get start getting real cunty too, because it's like someone gives you that card and they go, "Oh, too old fashioned." You go get it, whatever. Give them the card and you go. Actually, can I get another? And you go, no. And then mm-hmm. you just move on. Sorry, you had your chance. Yeah. See ya. 
But so it's great. Again, it's bad service, but then you get your work and getting your chips anyway. Mm-hmm. You're getting so much money that it doesn't matter. Also, it feels like a, a bad parent almost was like, it was my fault. I didn't want him to be mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is that yeah. is part Ooh. of it. People do not want Ooh. the bartender to be mad at them. Let's talk about that. <laughs> I've, I've waited tables and I've been the bartender. Yeah. And the, the attitude to a waiter is so shitty yes. compared to a bartender. Yes. Wow. 100%. Yeah. A bartender, is, he owns the place. Yeah. Or she owns the place when you're the way. <laughs> Thank the you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what you're going these, by these days. days. <laughs> I think it's a psych. Uh, psycho- uh, yeah. yeah, they hold the liquor. They hold the thing no, you want. I think what it is is you sit down and then the waiter comes to you. Mm. So you're they're coming to you and you're going bread whatever why yeah. whereas I'm there you're coming to me so straight away the power dynamic is you're asking me oh for it. interesting yeah. I, the waiter's asking you what do you want you yes. do need them to come over there's no right time to come over as a bartender so you do need like hey how you doing can, can you bring this please yes, mm-hmm. yeah instead and so of the like, waiter's like leave, go huh? do your job yeah the waiter you're like run floor monkey yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely they ah. will come check on you mm-hmm. bartender then, will just leave you there he'll never be like maybe he'll be like need another round and, and you know what? In America, too, because it's the free flow and drinks, you can just hook someone up like a motherfucker. They vodka, vodka fucking soda. Yeah, yeah. The whole Get a big thing. one. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I didn't like about Edinburgh. The scotch is great, but it's an exact it's, pour. It's yeah. The, um, measure thing where you yeah put, you, you pull it in and it gives you the exact shot yeah yeah that's awful yeah we i free pour if i like you it's just a free pour you gotta remember the alcohol level the alcoholics from scotland and ireland it'd be crazy to have a discretion it would be there would be fights you're right there are already fights the buybacks um, mm-hmm. oh. You know buybacks? Yeah, let's, yeah, what's a buyback? Explain it to me how it uh, works. We would do every third. Like if you bought two drinks with us, the third one was free. Just automatically? Yeah. Was it? Uh, yeah, but did I, you say that? You're just like, when they said like, they just go, this one's on me? Yeah, that's what you As they order, This one's you go, for me. This one's on me. Yeah, and then they tip more, and then they stay longer, and then they come and back. And that was allowed by the owners, the, mm-hmm. the managers? Buybacks. Yeah. yeah. I, wow. You I put thought, it on a special buyback tab. Oh. And so they know how much you're buying back. Yeah. Buying back. Why is it mm-hmm. called that? Because they bought you one back. I, I think it's start. That's an old New York tradition. You buy mm-hmm. two, I'll buy you one back. It's I'm usually, the bartender. I, I thought the standards usually buy three, get the fourth free. But then you I, can yeah. get two. It also depends if the restaurant's new. If it's newer, they want you to come in. So you they're know? Like, oh, they give you yeah. buybacks really fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Th- get out of Manhattan. They'll buy you drinks all night. Yes. Manhattan, they just don't give a fuck. They, yeah. You could get 10 drinks, they'll not, they won't buy you a single one. They don't care. Yeah. Wow. Whereas if you start heading out to Queens, out to deep Brooklyn. Divey mm-hmm. bars that are 40% full are, are a better fun experience. They'll give, mm-hmm. Oh, I've got some fucking dumps in Woodside that you'd love. Really? Like, <laughs> I mean, horrible places. The only problem was COVID, all these bars that were like shitholes. Like you walk in, the, the bar is all cigarettes, Burns yeah, and it's just blood from the eighties. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah. they're great. The best places you'll ever be, and they're busy at nine a.m. because it's raining, so all the construction workers don't go to work. They just go get fucked up. <laughs> but then COVID hit. Mm-hmm. All these people had all this free time, so they all like renovated their bars. Uh, and then you fuck. walk in and you go, it doesn't smell like piss. Yeah. It's nice. It's clean. It's yeah. it's horrible. The, it really they yeah, the carpet's dinge. not stinky. They, ru- they <laughs> ruined the stickiness is a mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go to a nice horrible the hive. Yeah. The Hive. Yeah. 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 In Edinburgh, it was this place I went to, and people were like, why do you like it? I'm like, it's so dingy. Dude. And it would be it would be the 16 to 20 year old, like drinking yeah. to throw up place. They just drink VBs and fucking VBs. Is that what they're called? I don't know. The blue drink. That might Catch be an Australian me. beer. But like, uh, it was just gross. Fights all the time. Wicked. And I would be there up until, you know, the time, especially on the weekends. And like, in the when you come in, you're like, it smells like puke. Oh, it's just puke. so set in. It's puke. And it's yeah. a grain storage facility that's just yeah. converted. So it's just like, I'm like, you'll get used to the puke, but I like the dinge. Dude, yeah, and the I love it. Sticky floors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one, one yeah. Of, one of, I got once. I once got kicked out for being too drunk from the hive. At the hive. At the hive. Everyone. You got kicked it. out for too drunk. At the hive. How <laughs> drunk were you? I was fucked. God. Damn. I don't even know how I remember, but I do remember this was that I had like a stamp. The guy kicked me out, and the bouncer was like, "You can't get back in." I go, "Oh yeah, well I've got a stamp." <laughs> and then he took a sharpie and just crossed it off and I was like, all right, Damn it. I was like, ah. Well played. You got yeah. me again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was marked like a Jew. Fucking sent <laughs> on my way. Uh, well, they didn't really you. send him on their way. That was a big, bigger problem. Sent him somewhere. I the marking was the finished, biggest issue. I never finished the story. <laughs> <laughs> I only saw the first ten minutes of your special. Hey, just join up and then like that was it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. was there anything else I'm not covering about being a fucking bartender? What else is there? What were we just talking about before that? Being Buy- swamped, buybacks. Buybacks. Swamped, buybacks. Yeah, the buybacks. Mm. Free drinks is a nice thing. 
Yeah. Getting a free drink, you really do feel like nice. Yeah. yeah. We would gamble. I don't know if you would. When we closed down, we would gamble at the end of the really? night. Yeah, yeah. we'd play CeeLo. We played dice. CeeLo, I don't know that one. Uh, it's something about, no, I don't know, but like the owner would sit there and smoke cigarettes and we would all just play CeeLo. Yeah, I knew some bartenders that would like start cards, start playing cards afterwards. I was never mm-hmm. really into that. That is a fun, fun thing about at least the comedy club wait, wait staff. So I'm assuming as you guys too, it's mm-hmm. we're closed, you know, 145, do the lights and then like two o'clock, everybody's out, lock the door. And then it's just like, we're all in here now. I love yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And we're all in here. Taps are open. Yeah, you're allowed to smoke inside. And yes. yeah. yeah, everyone it's smokes inside. Does oh. your totals right? Mm-hmm. You're sitting there, and then the, or when they're sitting there with the bartender, and he's tired or she's tired. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> no, and then you go, "Can I get a drink?" He goes, "Go get it yourself." Like that. I love that. Yeah. You're suddenly, I can go behind the bar. Like, you're, yeah, yeah. You're behind someone else's bar, just mm-hmm. making your own thing. That's yeah. the best. I, I do love that. Even at a comedy club, where I'm like, they're like, "Do you have any scotch?" And someone's like, "I don't know," because they're just like, "It's a, it's not that kind of bar." Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like, "Can I see what you have?" Like. Yeah, just go back and find. I'm like, sweet, I'm behind the bar. <laughs> I miss it so much. I haven't had those type of nights in forever though, because I'm just I feel like I'm too busy to just get fucked up all night. Yeah. Oh, dude, as soon as I'm done with this special, me too. This I coming weekend, I, haven't drank I am six getting weeks. blackout. Why? I've just uh, it was borderline problem. Oh so right. I have, I have to do a little reset every now and again. It's like yeah. when you're getting too fat or something. So you got yeah, yeah, like yeah. A quick diet. That's mm-hmm. what I yeah. think of that. I'm like, just, just six not weeks. let it yeah. get out of control. Once That's, I s- stopped working in restaurants, I stopped drinking. S- so yeah. heavily like that i my i lost weight everything just yeah. changed because like it's there you're, it's there it's someone free. offers you a, a glass of scotch like sure just one i'm not really getting drunk or a glass of wine is fine but like that's six through the week yeah that's way more booze i was working yeah. four nights a week so i was basically getting blackout four nights a week wow yeah if not fun, more fun fun and it was so fun but i literally lost the second half of my 20s to it <laughs> 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 yeah, twenty six through thirty. I was just like, bye. <laughs> but boozing is the best. And then mm-hmm. if you work in these places, you are more like you're most likely a boozer because mm-hmm. you're just in that culture. Some yeah, people, who would people, work there if you're not even into booze? Like, yeah, some, like all of this conversation for, for a lot of people who just don't drink, they have no idea what that culture is mm-hmm. like. They don't know what it's like to fucking. It's weird when you do jokes on stage and it's and you do jokes, especially when you're like late 20s and you joke just about going out or drinking or doing drugs and a lot of the crowd's like I'm married with kids and I've never done that mm-hmm. yeah like they can't really relate but yeah. you're just assuming, like this is everybody's life right yeah <laughs> you're like no <laughs> yeah. drinks on a weekday <laughs> that's the best it's the best it's, it's the, the right best. time to drink Tuesday give me a Tuesday and a Wednesday give me, Tuesday. Give me a nice rainy Tuesday mm-hmm. and I'll go to a bar at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. oh I can't wait for the summer I'm doing er, that er, all the time let's do day drink pass out at 6 p.m. oh I love it I love it <laughs> oh. day drinking night drinking mm-hmm. weekends weekdays whatever I I'll also love a Sunday give Sunday me a because that's the industry night that's Sundays it. have always been my favorite day to drink mm-hmm. that's industry night yeah that's when uh, like basically yeah, yeah, we would always have like people would work brunch and then they would yeah. be done with brunch and come to our bar for happy hour and then at the end of the night we would all just fucking go to yeah. Crown Inn and just get wow. hammered. Yeah, like like midnight is a good because all the bars start to close early mm-hmm. too, but they're all open late Friday, Saturdays mm-hmm. and you're tired from those shifts. Yeah, and you had Sunday. money to burn so you're just like Sunday's the, the Sunday's night. Sunday's is the, the best because mm-hmm. everyone that's out is kind of like fucked the corporate life you know, mm-hmm. fuck the next day or it's it's your last time to get fucked up and mm-hmm. um, when when i before not bartender but back in ireland when we would go on sundays were the best because we'd go out we'd all me and my friends would go out saturday night and then we would just meet at the bar on a sunday but mm-hmm. we'd never organize it wasn't like we sent the text like are you down there we would all just go down to our local pub and then just if you're if there was no one there yet you just sit there and wait eventually they'll show up mm-hmm. or you'll show up and they're all there and then as soon as you walk in, everyone's like, oh, shit, what happened last night? And they go, last time I saw you, you were with that fat Polish chick. Go, oh, wait, I tell you. You want to drink, get around it? And everyone's like, yeah. Oh, uh, wow. They it's like this, meet, uh, reunions. And yeah. yeah. And they tell the stories from the night before. You drink and then mm-hmm. the sports would happen. Sundays are just the Sunday. Day. Yeah, the sports. That's always fun. Oh, yeah. the sports. God. What do you mean? Mm-hmm. Football. Oh, right, sports right. Sports is a... There's always sports on Sundays. Yeah, yeah. sports, soccer. Yeah. <laughs> sports, soccer. Yeah. <laughs> football, <laughs> no, soccer. You know, if you call it a sport. Yeah. <laughs> but you do the football. Mm-hmm. That's, I'm really triggered now. I want to drink so hard. Yeah, me too. It sounds so fucking fun. It's just the best. Yeah. God, this These, su- this summer table. in New York drinking is the, the best. It's yeah. the best. Yeah. You can be out late, t-shirt and jeans. Mm-hmm. 
walk from place to place, and there is a bar, There's not always, a far walk. Yeah. yeah. Five minutes tops, you're going to another bar. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the Lower East Side is fine. The one near Gas Digital, I haven't really been in there yet, but I'm like, assuming it's it looks fine and great. The one next, like right above it? Like right, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah but like yeah, when yeah. you walk in, it's like next, yeah, like it's the left yeah. or something with that. It's like that's that's a sick one. It just, they all look just like sick, cool bars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This area, I love this, this area. area. Is the best. This area, the one with the the corner bar over. God, it, where they filmed Jessica Jones. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I've been I, there a few par- times. I don't know the name of it, but I know. It yeah, yeah, yeah. Name. And I love it's like it's got Buck Hunter and darts oh, yeah, and yeah, shit yeah, like yeah. that. I think they filmed some Godfather in there. Oh that's yeah, what Ron Bennington said. Really? I, that's my wow. late night writing spot. Oh really? So I'm like, you know, you come home after sh- after sh- whatever, and I'm like, and I'm, and then it hits you once in a while. Like I never write during the day like I'm supposed to. I'm like, this is when I'm up. I have yeah. three hours now before I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why watch TV? This is the time. So I'll get like a beer or two. Mm-hmm. Look at the fucking screen and just sit with a notebook. Oh, great. that's good. Quiet enough. Nice. Weekdays, it's great. Mm-hmm. Have two oh, or three beers. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then Buck Hunter. You're like, yeah. I'm not thinking right now. Let me go play a fucking. Let me shoot some deer. Yeah. That's a great one. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Fuck, I love that like late the nightcap that turns into a fucking yeah, yeah. few. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, just, I'll just have one more. Yeah. Three or four. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, that's always fun. The bartenders don't bother you, you just sit at a table by yourself. Yeah, especially it's fun. if you have your little notebook. Uh-huh. They know like, what you're doing. Oh, yeah. That seems that's what I'm jealous of, like Ireland, Scotland, England, where mm-hmm. it's like you can just sit with a newspaper at a bar. Yeah. And just like read, read a book. Who it's, cares? It's frowned upon to fucking talk to each other, you know? Uh, there was a video of a friend of mine, she owned a bar, and one of the uh, old man walks in and she goes and this is they catch it on camera she goes how are you doing Patty and he goes Guinness <laughs> <laughs> and that was it <laughs> his response great. was just Guinness wow. <laughs> she, had, she goes straight away <laughs> and that, but that's the type of guy probably who would never talk like just there's, there's guys that's, these old Irish bars mm-hmm. but guys at the bars will just they'll never say anything for years wow. yeah. they'll just nod and every time they want to drink that, like, mm-hmm. that's it yeah, there's a bar in uh in Bloomington, Indiana. I forget what it's called, but it is a shithole. It's very, very bad. The bottom, the floor is covered in peanuts. Oh yeah, yeah. And I then like the those. gambling strips that they have, um, like you buy like four for a dollar and you win like maybe twenty bucks or oh, whatever. The rest on the yeah, floor. And they, it's all on the floor, and then they just have plaques on each one for each guy who's died oh, at the stool, wow. and so they're oh, like, that's get him in. Yeah, and so there's nothing. You know, you're not allowed to sit there until all the other seats are taken. So, yeah. but those are uh, like, they're really? literally plaques on the bar for these guys. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were trying to convince me, me and Stefano were just in um, Austin the same time, overlapping. And uh, they were like, you got to move here. It's so great. And then we we're walking home. And it was Sunday night. It wasn't like a busy night. No, Monday night. But it was like, dude, there's like one street. Downtown, there's two streets that are parallel. And then that's it. Mm-hmm. Here, it's like, Every street and every avenue. There's multiple places. Mm -hmm. There's no like, if you're on Southern Congress in Austin, like it's that street. And then like 10 minute walk over is First Street. Mm -hmm. And then nothing in between. There's nothing like New York for drinking. Yeah, it's the best. Forever. Summer. Mm -hmm. New York for Everton. New York in the summer is just the the greatest. I can't imagine a place. I'm taking Sundays off now from shows just because I want to, because it's my travel day. So I get home at like two o'clock anyway. So I'm going to have the rest of my day to just. Yeah, well, I have to be at work. And, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. It's a real good idea. Mm-hmm. Nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna schedule myself now. A nice blackout day. Now. Blackout day. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like know about like blackout day. But Tuesday, I love maybe. COVID 2020, summer of 2020. Oh, mm-hmm. that was we're, so we're fun. Where DeRosa be like, you want to drink? I'm like, it's noon. He's like, is there anything going on? And you're <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I'll meet you. I'll be there at five. Sure. Absolutely. Incredible. Yeah. We had a backyard. We moved in with another comedy couple. We had a backyard with a fire pit. And so every day we'd be like, okay, when you're done with whatever you're doing, come over at four. We're having a fire and just getting hammered. And it was outside, so it was technically safe. (laughs) So we would just have all of our friends come over. Oh, yeah. Those early COVID days, we all went nuts. Mm -hmm. We went nuts. It's so fun. No reason not to drink. And because we kept thinking at first, we thought that the liquor stores and stuff were going to close because we, they kept closing stuff and we were like, wait, is that an essential business or not? So mm-hmm. we would go stock up for like, well, we might not get any beer for whatever for two weeks. Yeah. So you'd have and to it, go in and grab everything. Yeah, and then yeah. two days later, you'd be out of the fucking drinks so you'd have to go back. Yeah. Like, two when weeks we, of alcohol yeah. never lasts. Mm-hmm. When we realized that we would like to, to go to uh, walk tales, they called them, yeah. and get it to go in a Capri Sun type pouch or whatever or mm-hmm. just like uh, a cup with a, with a, like a plastic, clear yeah. plastic with a plastic lid and just mm-hmm. a straw in it. And then you're like ordering cocktails to go, and then someone's like, "I want a beer to go," and you have a beer to go, and you're like, well, 
why am I getting this from a bar? Yeah. I should yeah. be getting this from a bodega. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And you just get two 20s and just pee, oh, fill yeah. it up that same thing. Mm-hmm. Or just yeah. leave, leave them in the can. It's just, And there was like, oh, it became like Hong Kong. Yes. You just drink out in the streets. Yep. It was mm-hmm. great. Have you ever drank in a bodega? No. That's an experience and it's fun <laughs> what because you stayed to, there yeah if you got to go to like spanish neighborhoods where they they play music and they'll have a couple of stools and they wow. let you just buy them and sit in the bar or wow. sit in the bodega and they're playing music people are dancing and you're just cracking open these big tall boys, tall Bud, boys. whatever you're drinking oh that and, sounds uh, fun and empanadas and stuff but wow. it's got to be like a sh- it's got to be a shitty you gotta go to the bronx or something mm. like some shitty spanish neighborhood brendan that, walsh yeah that's fun that sounds fun brendan walsh has a prank decided him and his friends made their whole foods bar their neighborhood bar <laughs> and they hung out there for hours and got sloshed <laughs> at whole foods <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were fucking Chicago drinkers too. Or he was an Austin guy. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Man, booze is so good. Booze yeah. is the best. They're the best. Damn. Sh- yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. I've got a glass. I got a fucking bottle of scotch that I had saved for this. That I'll be shoot shooting that Sunday. We'll all do a shot and then just blackout month. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Ooh, can't wait to see ya. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be rowdy. <laughs> I'm gonna stop by the cellar and shit and just be like, no, I'm not going up tonight. Yeah. <laughs> just getting fucking. Heckling, Spritz just, me! Just you heckling at the bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suck! Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. All right, guys. This has been great. Hey. This was very fun. Thanks for having time. us. One more time. Okay, then what's your podcast? Hold on, hold on. Let me address this. Something with Gal. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Begins with G. That's Gal. No, no, no. The other part, too? The first word is yeah. G, Gal. G, G, Gal. Wait. Well, it? my handle is at Caitlin Palufo on Instagram. At Caitlin Palufo. Uh, let's do those. C-A-I-T-L-I-N. Thank you so much, Ari. And then- uh, Two Fs? Yes, two Fs. Two Fs and Palufo. Um, and then Good Time Gal Good is time my podcast. Gal. You were kind of right. Yeah. Good You're Time right. Gal. Yeah, that was right. <laughs> you yeah, were kind of right. right. You're like, what do you mean kind of? I said because- <laughs> Yeah. How, did, how was it not at all right? <laughs> um, Good Time Gal. Mm-hmm. Check it out on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, mm-hmm. wherever you find your podcast. Ari will be on it in a month. <laughs> be in it, yeah, sometime over the summer. Um, yeah. And the Colin Terrell podcast yes. is now, he has his own studio. Yes. So check that out. YouTube, inst- not Instagram, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Apple Podcasts. I need some more coffee. I had a half a glass. You did it's great. Really You're doing great. Me. Follow me on social media at Colin Terrell where I post all my live dates also. Look That's at good. that. That's very good. You got a link tree? I do have a little link tree. You got to have a link tree. It's all your links at once. Link tree. link tree, baby. Instead yeah. of choosing which one of the things they'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Link tree. Link tree is the way forward. What do you guys have a link tree? Dates? Merch Dates. podcast? Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, YouTube. YouTube. Little yeah. Black Lives Matter link. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Is no. that what you got? No. What, are you kidding me? <laughs> You gotta, have, you, gotta have, you gotta have a Rickroll fucking link too. Something like that. Like, oh, that's funny. Donate to my Black Lives Matter cause and then just a Rickroll <laughs> photo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right, guys. Thank you very much. I'll uh, see you later. Bye. Well, that's the episode, you guys. It's all over. It's all over. My taping is this Saturday and Sunday. My Probably my best special I'll ever do. Ari Shafir Jew. It's not going to get any better than that. My next special after that, the only way it can be at all better is if I, I have this plan to... I was telling Colin about it later. We're walking in the West Village in Greenwich. Doing an hour of material, then burying that, dropping that as if I recorded it. A lot of people hate comedy talk. And then doing another hour of material and then taking the best of both of those. That might be the only way I can like come close to this, but it's still not going to be good. It's still not going to be good at that. This is my opus. That's it. This is my fucking opus. Ari Shafir Dooch, June 11th and 12th. I know I said do. Let's just skirt right over it. Get tickets now at AriShafir.com slash tour. Um, I had another memory of the Galapagos that we were snorkeling. And I had this dream of... Uh, how does this fucking rocking chair not rock? I had this dream, a long time dream of seeing a fucking, what are those horse fishes? Seahorse. 
Um, I was in Indonesia on an island that I will not tell you about because it might ruin it. And it's a snorkel island. And they had like, I mean, the entire length of even more of this park that I'm in right now. It never got deeper than like five feet. And, and there were little canals inside the corals and stuff that you could like go down a little more, but that's only like five feet more. And you could swim in these like weird canals. It was so cool. You had to pay. It was a private island, so you had to pay. But it was like $1.75. <laughs> I remember everybody going, what, we got to pay for this? We're already paying for the excursion. It was on the way back from seeing the fucking um, Komodo dragons. And uh, yeah, you get in that mindset of living like a hostler. You start going like, what the fuck? Why do we have to pay? But then it's like you go like back to your like, so it's that it's that song Common People where you, you live like common people then eventually you start feeling that way. Eh, that's not the theme of the song. Anyway, um, that was the best snorkeling I've ever been to. It was just, I mean, so far out, all snorkeling, never got deep. So you, I chased a fucking giant sea tortoise for fucking... 30 minutes and I finally looked up and I was a long way from the shore, far. I mean, it took me like five minutes of swimming just to get back in. It was great. And somebody saw a seahorse there. Um, who was it? It was my friend from Italy, I think. She saw a seahorse. I was like, what? And she goes, it's right around there. And yeah, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. And I had a dream of seeing a seahorse for a long time since then. That was 2017. And I was like, where are they going to be? It's like, I like nudie branches when I go scuba diving, but I wanted to see a seahorse. And in the Galapagos, there's a dive on an island that looks a bit like a seahorse. I mean, it's shaped like a seahorse. Marissa, put it up on the screen. Don't, don't put the name of the fucking island. Just put the shape of the island up on the screen. And we went on a snorkel and he said there might be seahorses here. And it was me and my boyfriend and fucking some other people from all over and this mom and her son. Let's call his son Lucas. That wasn't his name, but let's call him Lucas. And we dove around. We saw some sharks fucking, you know, we dive through this fucking really cool, um, really cool, like, I don't know, not cave, but just like a, an arch. Not as strong. The pink ones are not as strong. Nothing. Um, and then we got to a place where he's like, there might be some seahorses. He goes, but you can't fucking muddle the water or you won't be able to see them. And I broke off from the group. I was like, I got to find these fucking seahorses. And he told me, he unlocked it for me. He goes, it'll have his tail wrapped around a branch. And that's what you want to be looking for. And God damn it, I wanted to see one. So the group was all over there, about 10 people. And I fucking broke off by myself to see if I could find one of these seahorses. And guys, I found it. Yeah, I found it. I found a seahorse. I couldn't believe it. It was a seahorse about know, the size of my fist, maybe. Tail wrapped around a branch holding on. And I couldn't get down, I couldn't stay down, probably five feet under the water, so I had to get down, but not muddle the water, not muddy it, because they'll take off or they won't be able to see him. Eventually somebody's like, what are you looking at? And I wanted to be like, nothing, but you can't do that. You can't keep nature to yourself. You just can't. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna be in Chicago, Illinois, uh, June 18th at the Vic Theater and uh, Minneapolis, uh, it's not time. Cut that out, Marissa. I'll do it at an insert. And um, nah, just keep it in. Just keep it in. June 18th at the Vic and June 17th at the, at the Pantages in, uh, in Minneapolis. June 18th at the Vic in Chicago, Illinois. Get tickets at areyoushafir.com. So you can't keep nature to yourself. And I was like, and my special, Areyoushafir dude, shipping June 11th and 12th. Um, you just can't. And I went over there and I fucking, I was like, I, I found one. I told them I found one. And they all came over. And fucking dumb fuck Lucas started swimming over. He's a spaz. That's the only way to put it. He's a spaz in the classic sense of the word. 
maybe that's autism, maybe it's nerd, maybe it's whatever. But he's a spaz. And right before he came over, I found a second seahorse. There were two just sitting there. It was a find of a lifetime. And then fucking Lucas comes over. And you have to be very still and just kind of like let yourself go down. Maybe have somebody else hold you down as you're far away. And Luke's going, <laughs> muddles up the fucking water. Fuck children. They are the worst. They ruin everything. I just saw one today. He's like, <coughs> I just in a stroller. But still, your child is fucking coughing germs everywhere. I'm not worried about COVID. I'm worried about a fucking cold. They're fucking bags of germs who ruin your one experience to see a fucking seahorse. But you didn't ruin it for me. You didn't ruin it for me, Lucas, because I already saw it. You ruined it for everybody else. Hey, mom, how about tell Lucas not to be such a fucking spaz bot? I see. Fuck you. God damn it, he sucked. Hey, I heard uh, seahorses are, uh, you know, uh, sea lions. Uh, well, actually, sea lions are part of the Arachnid uh, group, and not just a family. If they're Shut up with your goddamn science. Oh, you're all so smart about science, but you don't know how to fucking not with your flippers. Idiot. Idiot. The guy told you not to fucking muddle the water. He said it. He's the guide. Do you not listen to him? Fucking shit. Anyway, that's the kind of shit that I drank off later that night in the Galapagos at a fun bar where they played live music. I'm Ari Shafir for Caitlin Palufo. No, wait. I'm Ari Shafir. This has been Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank, episode 473 or 4. I think 3. I think it's 473. But it might be 474. Tip your bartender with Caitlin Palufo and Colin Terrell. Oh, wait, wait. Wait, no, I got I do it. I do it. There's a better way to do it. Hey guys, this has been Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank, episode 474. Tip your bartender for Colin Terrell and Caitlin Paluvo. I'm Ari Shafir saying so long.